Fish Mortals, tis. What the fuck is this setup? Also, where is Survivor? Uh, he's switching up places right now. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, for his presentation. Ah, uh, for presentation. Hello. You are all floating in the air. I'm like, I did not, I did not condone uh, floating in air. Oh, no. I have no lower body. <laughs> oh no! I'm levitating. That's new. Okay. Ah! Hello! We have new followers. Excuse me. That was quick. Uh, thank you, Pit the Bill, Pill the Bill, for becoming a foolish mortal. We will get your crypt ready and set up soon. You get to have your blanket look like whatever color or pattern you want, but you can only choose between cotton or cotton. Thank you for become. Thank you for becoming a foolish mortal, and please enjoy the chaos. I'm working on my greetings some more. Um, yay! <laughs> Uh, by the way, <laughs> greetings, foolish mortals, to I Cat. Um, so, today is a special day. Today is the day I decide to fly. No, 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 no. Uh, hold on. Ah, there. Proper one. It was a great greeting. Thank you, Pill the Bill. So, today, if you remember, I, a while back, I did a subathon. And when we hit 40 subs, my friends... These four lovely little idiots, these four little foolish mortals. Well, there was a fifth one, but he's missing. He's the lost beetle. Um, agreed to basically teach me 40, uh, Warhammer 40k lore. Surface level. Because we're not that crazy. Right, guys? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, later. Oh, that's for later. Yeah, if I hit no. 40k subs, you guys get to get to the deep lore, okay? How about that? I'm I'm pretty sure if this was any past surface level, I would not be able to do a good job here. <laughs> okay. But nope. Thank you, Pill. I just sit us down and watch TTS. You're just gonna do yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, and then we get copyright stricken. Anyway. I doubt we'd get copyright stricken for that. And animation, and a good one at that. Good Absolutely. One. Anyway. Yeah. So, I agree to doing this. Everyone, introduce yourself. Introduce yourself or else guess i'll start hi i'm gm zilla um i stream on twitch uh mostly video games right now working on starting up my own uh role play games that i'm streaming uh and pleasure to be here uh cat is my png mom as she drew the wonderful art you see before you i am a mom actually technically i'm a mom to all of these people in some form or fashion uh corn survivor were taken from a dumpster Lo uh, Dapper here. Legend. What? <laughs> you were... <laughs> well, how else was I in the dumpster? <laughs> I mean, that that's on you to decide, man. Yeah, that's your lore, not mine. <laughs> and Dapper, anyway, next victim. Hi, I'm Survivor. Uh, I'm the Paladin, currently in uh, Pumpkin King form. I don't really stream anywhere, I just... Cat found me in a wholesome, wholesome dumpster and said, you're, you're with me now. <laughs> Basically. And here I am. I think that's how most of how all my co-hosts became a thing. I found them; they're mine now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, I'm I'm in a few spots on the internet, but mostly I talk. I'm here to talk about random nerdy stuff, like 40k and fantasy, and RPGs and D&D &D and yada yada yada. Anyway, that's my that's my bit. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, so one of my other PNG children is here. Hello, Punk Mog. Anyway, uh, next victim. Uh, hi, I guess I'll go. Um, hi, I'm Dapper. Um, I am known as Dapper Tiefling online. I'm not online a lot of places at the present moment, but I yeah. kind of just exist here sometimes. When, uh, whenever, like, some of my friends are like, hey, we need an extra person. Someone drags me out of whatever dark room I'm currently writing D&D &D in uh, <laughs> to, uh... <laughs> Uh, play uh, games with them or hang out or stuff. Okay, um, Dapper's currently been self-isolating. That's enough self-isolating. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So. Uh, uh. So yeah, I'm. I'm just here to try and not screw up Warhammer lore. Uh. That. That's. That's me. It's Warhammer lore. It's screwed up already. I was about to yeah, say. I was gonna say it's like we're it's. It's, it's already screwed up. We're going to screw it up more. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like D&D &D lore. Nothing is canon. Yeah. But it's all true. <laughs> but it's true, made, don't worry about it. Everything's made up and the points don't matter. Exactly. Yep, yep. 
Anyway. Magnus may or may not have created Warhammer Fantasy. That's just my headcanon. Anyway, Core, introduce yourself. Oh, boop, boop. oh shit, I'm here. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. My name is Core, Creative Corner. Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt, Instagram, and uh, where else am I? Oh, I'm Twitter. on Tumblr, too, and Twitter. Oh, God, I'm everywhere. Please help. You're not uh, on put Twitch. Me together. You're not on Twitch, except that I drag I you here. I technically am on Twitch, but I don't stream. No, you're just hanging out with me because I stole you from a dumpster. <laughs> exactly. I don't know where I came from. Help. <laughs> anyway. Where are we going to go with this? I'm too busy laughing. Um, all right, who, who, wants, okay. who wants to start this off? Okay, so let's just get you over to a different screen. So to give you guys, uh, to make you guys not have to just stare at my ugly mug the whole damn time. And also in case there's visual aids, because I feel like there's visual aids. Why do I feel like there's going to be visual aids in my future? Um, uh, not that one, not that one, not that one. This one. I have buttons. I know what I'm doing. I'm intelligent. Behold, my art screen. I will be doodling while they teach me shit. This is going to be because this is how I learn. I learn via doodles. A a a ask Dapper what my D&D &D notes are like. <laughs> yeah. This is yep, they exist. Yeah, they, they, they Holy exist. Holy shit. Uh, I did the stupid thing of looking up a timeline. Why did you look up a <laughs> fucking timeline, you Holy moron? Holy shit. Even <laughs> I know don't look at that. Even, Even I, I know, know that. Hell, <laughs> uh, Rubute, <laughs> Robert, Robert Gul Rubute Gulliman knows. Don't even look at that. Listen, <laughs> he is in the cannon. Listen, I learned from Legend of Zelda, never look up the timeline. I just wanted to remember, what was that name that, uh, that, that the Earth was through when it was like a dust bowl? Oh, Age of Strife. Oh, there's everything else. It's okay. You'll be fine. No, they won't. Anyway, so who's going to freaking start? I guess I will, as, um, due to some impromptu changes, okay. I'm giving a summary of the Imperium. What happened? Oh, yeah, because we lost our space dwarf. We lost the dwarf. It's not that hard to lose a dwarf. They're very short. Cat, that is dwarf racist. They're so yeetable. <laughs> Stop eating! Ow! Need to get them a box to stand on. <laughs> I just got bonked. How wooed. Oh, hi, Nikolai. Hello, Nikolai. Okay, so I'm starting this shindig off. Okay. So, in a not too distant galaxy, also known as the Milky Way, uh -huh. on a not too distant planet, also known as Earth. That's right. That's right, everyone. We're starting on frickin' Earth. Oh, God. I am prepared for the hell that is Thoth brought us to me. Put that stream deck over there, cat, because if you have that stream deck anywhere near you, you're going to start pushing random sound effect buttons again on accident. <laughs> <laughs> so a long-ass time ago, there were a whole bunch of shamans and other spiritual leaders all throughout the world who sensed a great disturbance in the spiritual and psychic realm. I'm sorry, so they combined what? their... Yeah, uh, it's, it's called the warp. It used to be good, now it's not. Anyway... Um, they fused their souls together and made a super being known as the Emperor of Mankind. Dun dun dun. And this, uh, egotistical nonsense decided to manipulate mankind from behind the scenes until he felt like he could reveal himself and lead humanity into a golden age, which kinda worked. He went around conquering Earth, conquering all the nations of Earth, and helped humanity spread throughout the cosmos. Um, but as he was preparing for his ultimate project, and he either made or naturally sired a whole bunch of sons, uh, known as the Primarchs, uh, Chaos did as Chaos do. Yes, what did we do? Were, what did we do? What did we do? What did we do? Uh, scattered his children all across the the uh, Milky Way, and so the Emperor had to uh, go out and try to reconquer and also rediscover the galaxy. Oh. And he made his very first arm. well not his very first army, he had a few before, but the ones that we care about are the Adeptus Astartes, also known as Space Marines. Those are the big buff guys that are Space like eight feet tall that run around in tin cans, right? Yes, yeah, they With got the ribs that are fused together and like I want to say two inches thick. Um, they have 
multiple additional organs, and they have, uh, their genes have been manipulated and including genetic material from the Primarchs that they are uh, connected to. Each Primarch was supposed to lead a legion of these space marines. Well, uh, the Emperor went around collecting his sons, uniting them under one banner, and sometimes being an asshole about it. That sounds about accurate with military types. This is where I'm going to be snark. I was going to say, is this is where I get snarky, everyone? And so you have to expect this from me. I am prone to snark. <laughs> also, oh, yes don't worry. This is well warranted. <laughs> oh, yes, it's yes. Expected. I am also drawing Pokemon while listening. <laughs> um, right. So, uh, during this little riff, uh, one particular son uh, by the name of... Oh, God, I was not prepared for this discussion. He led the Emperor's children. Uh, of course. No, not Horus. Horus was not the first. It was Fulgrim. Fulgrim. Ah, okay. Fulgrim. Fulgrim? Fulgrim uh, was worshipping the Emperor as a god. <laughs> However... Wait, 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 hold on, hold up. That's not Fulgrim. That's, uh... Boot. Erebus. I'd like, uh, to, I'd like to point out the slight echo you have, Survivor, right now talking really works with your VNG. <laughs> oh, no, you're right. Oh, sorry. Right. Wasn't Fulgrim the Slaneshi bastard? Yes, but he wasn't the first in the fall cast. That was no, he uh, was not. It was uh, Warbearer, Warbearer's Primarch. Uh, uh, yeah. Just a second, just a second. I have a Google. Um, this is why I was not prepared today for. Oh, that's right. It was Lorgar. Uh, Lorgar, that oh, jerk. Lorgar, that's right. Yeah. I now oh, remember gosh. the parody voice yelling about Lorgar. There we go. <laughs> there we um, go. Now we're on track. There we go. There are way too many sons to keep track of, and really, there's only yeah. like five that I care about. So. Aww. Lorgar worshipped the Emperor like a god, and the Emperor was all about uh, atheism to the extreme. So, like those assholes who basically insult anyone who have any form of religion whatsoever, and just try to be like, there's no scientific proof, blah blah blah? Well, yes. Also, yes. it was a, it <laughs> was was a so. sound tactic because chaos is fueled by its belief. And I it was the Emperor's that. it was the Emperor's strategy to uh, stop uh, the warp by preventing people from believing in things. Because not only is it belief in the gods as they are, but legit anything that there was enough faith in would become manifest. Santa Claus is a chaos entity. I'm sorry, what? Well, at, least a warp, at least a warp entity, but yes. I'm sorry, yeah, what? Oh, hold on. Entity, yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting the lesson. I'm prone to this. He's a chaos entity? Santa's a... If, it, Santa's if there is enough it. belief in something, it becomes manifested in the warp, so there is a warp entity that is Santa Claus. What about the two yeah. Easter Bunny? What about the Queen of England? <laughs> she is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, the uh, yeah. the, Im the uh, warp, also known as the Immaterium, the Sea of Souls, yada yada yada, is basically a mirrored universe of ours, except instead of being a realm of matter, it's a realm of energy. That realm of energy is literally. The thoughts, hopes, beliefs, passions, and horrible, horrible things we think of in our nightmares uh -oh. made manifest. Uh oh. A little bit more of that latter one, by the way. Uh -oh. oh yeah, especially now nowadays. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking. Of, I'm just thinking about the shit I dream about. I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm gonna be honest that, with you, Chief. It. I don't like that's that. The, thing. the yeah. warp is literally made of your own personal demons. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. go to the warp. Also, just so you know, which came first, the materium or the warp? Don't think about that. <laughs> Just don't. Yeah. Don't, don't think about right it. now. Don't think about it. It's like the chicken and the egg. You don't think about it. You have an existential crisis. Oh, and uh, just a heads up, chat. We are going to get so many things wrong, but that's oh, because yeah. the timeline itself is literally like 40 to 50 page essay it, if you want to simplify it. It makes the stuff for apparently Legend of Zelda look nice. Or actually, yeah. the timeline involving Bioshock when Infinite became a thing, and then we had the timeline split bullshit. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah, yep. so it basically makes the Bioshock timeline look nice, right? And I know the Bioshock yeah. timeline pretty well, so... Uh, this game has 40 years of history that not only was made by several people, but contradicted themselves with each edition as they changed and modified the lore. Uh, the Primarchs that I mentioned in the original edition were just his the Emperor's generals, and they weren't modified superhumans, they were just people in power armor. And now they're his sons with divine purpose and blah it... blah blah blah. Anyway, back to lore and lessons and learning. Yeah, yay! yay! I'd like to point out Zillow was the most excited to do this, and I think Zillow is now slowly regretting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I have no regrets. 
just revenge plans. What? So, oh no, it's called Cat. Congratulations, you're now going to play Warhammer. Yay! Damn straight. Okay, so, um, these, uh, oh, where was I? Oh yeah, so Lorgar. the Emperor was mad about Lorgar because Lorgar was, and his, uh, and his legions were worshipping the Emperor like a god and spreading this as a faith. And uh -oh. not only is the Emperor against god worship, he was worried that enough worship in him as a god would make a warp entity version of him. So a god emperor? Yes! Which yeah. is very funny, all things considered, I will get to that. So, uh, he scolded him, reprimanded him publicly, and Lorgar held it against him, and this is when he fell to chaos. Yay! Specifically, chaos undivided. Oh. Which there are four chaos gods, we'll get to that later. But the worship of them together, either as one entity or as a united force, is called Chaos Undivided. Lorgar yeah. then decided to talk to the most charismatic of the Primarchs, Me? Horus, oh. and get him on his side. Then we have a whole bunch of books, novels, accounts, and a whole new setting for the war game <coughs> later. And this is the Horus Heresy, where uh, Horus, being the charismatic person that he is, can basically convinced half of the Adeptus Astartes and Primarchs to join it to join against the Emperor, cause a big war, death, mayhem. Um, the Emperor is kind of dead. Um, he was shanked and then had a bit of a, an iron halo shoved in his eye. Now he's a rotting skeleton. Several Primarchs were killed. Um, many fled to this rip in reality known as the Eye of Terror which is where the warp is bleeding into real space. Uh, Horus is dead, and war, 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 death, death, death. War, We're in the war. grim dark future, everyone. War never changes yeah. kind of war we talk... <clears throat> Hello? H Hello? Did my internet die? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh... Oh, oh no, yeah. we're trained. And now we're trained still a lot. Guides their ships through, but uh, it's not as effective. Um, guys, um, hi. What? My everything died. No. Oh no. Oh, oh, what part? What part did it die at? Grim dark I'm future, everybody. Ah, fantastic. So basically, so, I'm still seeing the stream. Oh no, my internet, as in my my, I couldn't hear anything. My my Discord and my OBS oh. basically went frozen. So. I don't. I missed a bit. So, uh, war, grim, dark future, everybody! Yay! That's where we. That, 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 that. Okay, you didn't miss too the much. The emperor dying because you haven't missed much since then. Okay, the yeah. emperor no. died. Okay. And, yeah. Shame. Yeah, the um, emperor died. Well, dies kind of not life support. He's kind of a vegetable. He's yeah. basically right. a rotting skeleton on a golden throne where they have to sacrifice a thousand souls to him every day to keep him alive. Where did he get that? Um, we'll get to that. It's huge. <laughs> Uh, he he's a big boy, and yeah. he's a big angie boy. Um, and right the now the state of the Imperium is that it is barely held together. The the Space Marines have been divided into chapters, so every Legion now has several chapters within because they're like, oh, we can't have big armies all unite under one banner, or else they could start another Horus Heresy. And now they're spread thin. As not only are there issues with uh, chaos, which was the original problem, but now there's also Xenos threats, and some that were there before and now are just coming back in full force, aka Tyranids, aka my babies. Uh, oh, and the Necrons. Can't forget the Necrons. Oh, don't forget the, the Necrons, Zero. <laughs> forgot oh. about the and we lost where they went. So we covered about pretty much, yeah, the Empire, the Emperor, to think. And the Horus Heresy, um, Gore, do you want to take us off of talking about the Deaths of Stardis in death? Or do you want to just keep moving on? The Adeptus of Star uh... I mean, I... I don't know much about the... Well, I kind of know quite a bit about the, Ast the Adeptus. Uh, where do you want to... Where do you want to start? Let's probably start with the Primarchs who 
who lived and the ones who didn't quite live and uh what they're all about like just let's, let's just say the main the main chapters the main lead us in game chapters all right so let me let me just go ahead and get get the prime marks all up here nope 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 that's just telling what the prime marks are i need the prime marks names the prime marks are a prime mark i don't know so I'm we got sorry. multitudes of a different uh different different dudes you have you have like Lehman Russ, Rogel Dorn, who was at, evidently went missing at one point, but uh Is he okay now? We don't know. <laughs> all all we found was his hand. <laughs> Righty or lefty? I think he's a lefty. <laughs> I think um, lefty. Yeah. I believe gloved. Yeah. See, yeah, this is what happens when you try to teach me things. I'm going to ask dumb questions and it's going to really test your wherewithal with me. So, yes, we have a multitude of different <clears throat> Primarchs that went missing and or just turned full traitor. Uh, you have you have individuals like, like Motorian, uh, da, 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 Conrad Kurz, who is just... Oh, Conrad Kurz was killed. I forgot about that. He was killed. Yeah. Uh, Agron... Fucking just like the angriest Primarch you'll ever meet became a traitor, Demon, Demon Prince, alongside Magnus the Red, my boy, my baby. He did nothing wrong. He just tried to be daddy's best. I mean, he did a few things wrong, but that not entirely his fault. He was trying. Hi, but Leo. Yes. Welcome to uh, Warhammer lore lessons from my friends who are torturing me. Help me. I'm chained to a radiator. I'm kidding. I'm not chained to a radiator. Well, I mean, you got you got Horus, who basically think think Lex Luthor, but charismatic and actually competent. It's terrifying. Right. Lex Luthor and is charismatic. Human. Lex Luthor hey, is charismatic, though. Hey. Hello. Hello. Wait, what's going on? I am alive. I'm oh very God. sorry. I lost track of time. I am so sorry. Well, as punishment, <laughs> now you have to introduce yourself. I have to introduce myself. I am the daycare boss. Caretaker of nerds on the internet and herder of nerds like cats. Hey! So you can't hurt us in general. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I, I run one armor unit, I am leadership in another, and I keep being given more responsibility over internet nerds, so yes. Aren't you lucky I never made you a mod on my stream? <laughs> yes. Dark temptation. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> since uh, Corey, you, since Corey, you're just getting the, the, the fun bit. I will catch daycare boss up to where we are. We've yes. just gone over the uh, primer of the the Imperium, the Emperor, the Horus Heresy, okay. and we just started talking about the Primars and the Adeptus Astartes. Alan, make your password. Uh. Alan does not touch my lore. I touch his though. Touch, 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 yes. touch, 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 touch. Oh, also, he's right also. Uh, my dogs are needing attention. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. Also, no actually, since Alan is also here, Alan is also one of my PNG ch Everyone right now are PNGs I've made. Yeah. <laughs> Who uh -oh. is it? Who's a PNG child here? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> what up? <laughs> I am a, I am a rock. Yeah. But I made it as a joke, made it as a joke idea of, you know, for when you inevitably become the streamer you want to plan to be. Which, it's, but it is still technically a PNG child. I am a rock. <laughs> you are not a rock. You are a crystal. You are shiny. Oh, wait. The dwarf's right beside you. Uh-oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Nitra. How you doing? Oh, my God. It is. Mm, I could guess ammunition for you. <laughs> I, I suddenly feel more threatened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, It'll be eye. fine. It'll be fine. You'll go for a little ride in Molly, and then you'll get <laughs> yeeted through the atmosphere. And then they send me bullets. <laughs> and sandwiches. And sandwiches, right, uh, yes. Since I'm on limited time, um, I, I can. Do you want me to do a basic rundown core of the Primarchs and what they oh. represent? Hold on. Uh, uh, yes, go right ahead. Gorgia the, right. Gorgia the Avali, uh, thank you for becoming a foolish mortal. We will get your crypt ready soon. You get to have your blanket be any color or pattern, but you only get to choose between cotton or cotton. Uh, thank you for becoming a part of the cast, and I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, I, I continue know, with I the hell. So much about the Astartes as, like, biological creatures and little to nothing about their chapters. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you have... You have... T you technically <coughs> have 20 Primarchs, two, 
two went missing. Nobody knows what happened. All all records redacted. Don't don't worry about those. What am I not supposed uh, to have, worry about? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Good. You're paying attention. Uh, Horus, who is the who is the war master, who her, who is at least looks a lot like Lex Luthor. Uh, okay. Who does and it? is Sorry. one of the, more, the premier strategists of the whole uh, Great Crusade. If he led the Little Wolves or the Sons of Horus or now the Black Legion. More on them later. On who? Oh you, god, so much. You have Levin Russ of the Space Wolves, who are basically space wolves. They are literally, they are quasi fairies, but also superhuman space marines who go around and kind of werewolves? Quasi. Yeah, quasi. Quasi, because no. this is not outright stated. <laughs> I'd like to point out, when I heard about Warhammer, I did the little I knew. I was sitting here going, wow, there is no furry representation in this tabletop game. This is a first. Oh, wrong. There, there, there is an entire legion. It's fine, but they just don't like to admit to it. Uh huh. Yeah, they are a small legion, all from uh from Fenris. And yes, everything everything about them revolves around basically uh bunch of people trying to great three create Norse lore in real in a futuristic setting. And I mean that both favorably and actually in canon. Yes. Space They're also characters. currently a super obsessed with wolves right now. So yes. There's your furry representation. Yay, furry representation. Also, space. It's fine. There's scalies too, but that comes later. Oh, I already yeah, know about the sexy uh, lizard people. You have Ferris Magnus, who is dead. <laughs> he's no he's, one he's, found his body. He ain't dead. He got his head chopped off, but then again, when does that stop anybody? Yeah, I was about to say that doesn't stop a lot it, of things. It, it's never stopped anyone in fiction from coming back. But yes, Ferris Magnus, he was the, he's the prime of the Iron Hands. The Iron Hands are the ones who are very much in depth with uh, the Adesby Cancus and believe, hey, let's take these weak fleshy bodies and make them metal. Ah, uh, the thing I'm slowly wanting to be doing because, oh my god, my fucking hips and spine! The flesh yeah, is they're all about yet. logical combat. They do not give in to their hate and rage like their father did. And they and are very convinced that's what got him killed. Quote shorter. <laughs> a head shorter. A head yeah. shorter. I would also like to point out, if they ever do turn off their uh, rage inhibitors, they will go absolutely cr absolutely angry and mad and start killing at a, a, a very large rate. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but I can't remember the word. Anyway. Angry mode Fulgrim. activated. Here's where Fulgrim comes in. Fulgrim's the pretty boy. <laughs> okay, yes, now, when you say, of the now when you say pretty boy, how pretty we talk... Would I be interested in him? Uh, let's see. We're talking about preternaturally pretty. We're Perfect talking in Sephiroth. every... Sorry, go on. I was gonna say, we're talking Sephiroth pretty. Eh, Sephiroth. No, we're, we're talking we're... prettier. We are talking the epitome of perfection in all aspects. So handsome that's, Squidward? Yeah, that's actually a better point. <laughs> He is absolutely obsessed with perfection, and so was uh, the Emperor's children, his legion. His whole, his whole bit was uh, the whole bit was proving that they are absolutely the for, the foremost minds, artistic taste, yada yada. I don't like how they sound like doing us. everything in the most per the most perfect way. I don't like this, including uh, like art. They said they are the, they are the most culturally inclined of all the space marine legions, and unfortunately, they fell to Slash, who uh, is all about giving the passions. More on Slanesh later. I'm yeah. already aware he's the pervert. I oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. That's yeah. doing a disservice. That's, I mean, that's yes. That's an understatement. <laughs> um, well, expands on to other things, but we'll get to that later. Oh, yeah. Sp speaking of scalies, Vulcan, the prime of salamanders. <laughs> he is Vulcan's biggest weakness. He said he's too damn nice, <laughs> and for a reason. Except when it comes to Eldar. But more on that later. Uh, Vulcan is the Primarch of the, of the Salamanders, and they are absolutely obsessed with three things. One, being the most humanitarian of all the Space Marine Legions, which is saying a lot, <laughs> and not that much at once. Mm -hmm. They are dedicated to defending humanity and, and protecting from everyone from usually mostly the basic Imperial citizens, and nobles by extension, and all the other higher ups, but generally they care as much about the, top, the uh, biggest... The guy with the biggest hat is they do about the, the smallest guy down in the in the bottom of the hives or agro worlds. Yeah, their Stop. philosophy is that either all citizens are worth protecting or none of them are. And yeah. since none of them are is absolutely the wrong answer, they protect all the citizens. So, and yes, they fought the Inquisition and a few other factions about some factions about that very on that very matter. And three send things on fire. <laughs> I heard set yep. things oh, on yeah. fire and I got excited. They love very much setting things on fire to the point where people ask, 
how can you uh how can you be the most humanitarian group when you set people on fire all the time and because they well, don't set the citizens on fire also a good point the good point to point out it's like yes they don't set the citizens on fire but they also there are worse things than being set on fire in this galaxy oh yeah, yeah. much oh, worse yeah. so you know uh all right we got uh vulcan who stayed loyal we have rogel dorn who also stayed loyal he was the praetorian of the imperium who was basically help fortify the a lot of a lot of the errors of the uh, including Terra during the Horus Heresy. He's very blunt. Oh, I like and so was his legion. Yeah, so was his legion, the uh, the Imperial Fist. So they're but, blunt um, as a fist. Okay. Well, yes. <laughs> they also they're also really big about fortifications, siege works by extension, and and basically giving the Ultra Means the finger outside of uh, the Space Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> they uh okay, that's accurate, yeah. Yeah, um, but basically, there are some of the more some of the more prominent. A lot, a lot of the chapters that come up later have come from their gene seed. Majority of Ultra Mains, a big bunch of them came from Imperial Fist. Yay! Then we get to the Ultramarines with Roberta Gilliman as their Primarch. The Smurfs. Yeah, Roberta Gilliman. Excuse me if I'm saying that wrong. I don't think anybody knows. That, right. I think it's uh, Ruba Gilliman. Yeah, yeah, I was thank you. I was looking over the name. I just I couldn't find a concise answer. So yeah, it, it differs depending on who you're listening to. I'll be honest. Uh, okay, uh, I'll put it this way: he's he's kind of to put it in historical aspect. He's kind of space Caesar, space Julius Caesar, but not quite like not quite an asshole, and but still very. He's big often on referred to as the Avenging Son. Okay. Yes. Okay. Why? But he's. Yeah, actually, when the Horus Heresy happened, it was him leading the Emperor's armies to push him back into the warp. Yep. Thank you. So, so the thing is, if Ro Rohal Dorn was the guy building up the defenses. Roberte was the guy... Uh, I'm just going to call him Robert. Robert was the guy basically leading the charge. Rob. Papa gotcha. Smurf. <laughs> Did you just Pop, call him Papa Papa, big Papa Smurf. <laughs> anyway, the Ultramarine... He's the reason why we have the Echoes of Stardis, which and the reason why everything's got the bottom down the chapters. After Horus Heresy, and yes, the, the Code of Stars is the big book of war that's implanted in everyone's mind, in all Space Marines' minds. That tells them this is the best way to do war. Trust me on this. It works nine times out of ten, and the Ultramarines get really obsessed when you tell them the book is not always right. The book is not always right. <laughs> as the as the um, as the uh, Imperial Fists, and especially the Space Wolves, like to point out constantly. Okay, also, hello, Ice Warrior. Yes, I am being forced to learn Warhammer 40k lore while drawing Pokemon because this is actually somehow helping me focus. I don't know how it is helping me focus. We do not question this. We just accept it. Yeah. Then we have uh, Magnus the Red, the, the red the red one-eyed Cyclops. <coughs> He's not, he doesn't really have one big eye. He has two eyes, and one's permanently blind. But uh, uh -huh. he's, the, he's the big psyker of the group. A few, a few of the Primarchs show psychic powers in one way or another, Magnus the only one who like fully manifested. That's basically on the scale of the it's, it's the Emperor, Magnus the Red, and then the Sigilite, which that's a whole other thing I will not be going into until Inquisition. Yeah, he was growing so powerful within the warp and within his own psychic powers that the Emperor basically decreed that he would be a successor that's... if if he were to die. In, in all things like Psyker and and warp entities. That that sounds nice. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Why am he was I... the one. Yep, he's the one dedicated to reading books and learning all about the warp and psychic nonsense, which uh, the emperor kind of forbade him for a while. Like, don't do that. That dangerous. Don't do that. He did not listen. <laughs> he thought he knew better, like every child and a parent that doesn't listen. Ah, oh, like the demo man when told, "Do not open the book. It will do bad things." Opens the books and loses his eyeball. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Yep, his uh, legion is the Thousand Sons, which are because before they re they found them, Thousand Sons were suffering a lot from a lot of mutations because a bunch of them were showing psychic powers, other ones were just freakishly mutating because because war warp energy, warp energy, and chaos, chaos. <laughs> so, but yes, uh, but that I said everything turned out stable for a time, and then Horus Heresy happened, and for Max's part, he was honestly trying to keep it all from falling apart and stop Horus from joining chaos. And then Lehman Russ was a fucking asshole and burned his world to the ground. To yeah. be fair, he was ordered to do so. Okay, I was going to say, was yeah. Lehman Russ like the guy who was in charge of like the story of the actual lore? No, it's a guy in character. Okay, okay. 
I had a moment. No, no, no. Lehman Russ was a uh, Lehman Russ was space furries. Okay. Yeah, Lehman Russ was he's the big he's the big dog dog guy. He's Lehman Russ is also referred to as uh, the executioner of the emperor, or something like that. He's yeah. if anything, yeah, him and his when uh, the emperor needs something truly dead outside of uh, the world ears, he sends the space wolves. And yeah, the space wolves are designed for killing other space marines, but. Or, yeah. uh, Lehman Russ, however, had a big beef with Magnus the Red, because... Yes. For two reasons. One, Ma uh, uh, Lehman Russ doesn't like psychic powers, because he's from Fenris, and they look at psychic nonsense as, uh, dangerous witchcraft, and, and warp and warp nonsense, and that's a big bad. Magnus I mean, points he's out, not really wrong. But then Magnus points out, what, what do you mean, what about these shamans you keep saying? No, no, they don't do sword powers, they do holy... Viking stuff. Don't worry weird about it. Wolf powers, yes. Yes, sure, sure, buddy, sure. To get so long story short, they've had a beef out for each other for the longest time. And when the emperor said, "Go bring back, go bring back Magnus," I'll follow this. Bring back Magnus, however you can, to yeah. Terra. Horus got involved. And said, "No, be even better." <laughs> and that's how Prosper burned. <laughs> The, it's, oh. uh, that's a little bit of an oversimplification. It at is. The end, at the end of the day, his his children, his legion, were mutating at an astonishing rate. The Emperor wasn't doing anything to stop them, because he had more important shit to do. But yeah. he never said that. Yeah. So, when all your children are slowly dying and turning into mutated monstrosities, and you are working on a pretty promising solution to it, do you just stop? No, of course you fucking don't. Because the guy who's told you to stop hasn't given you an adequate explanation as to the why. So he carried on his experimentation, kept delving deeper into warp magic to try and save his legion, and the Emperor was like, nope, okay, go deal with it, Fenris. I have no time for this bullshit. And that's pretty much how it happened, because the Emperor explains nothing and then expects absolute obedience. Yeah, the Emperor's, as Robert, as Robert, as, I'm just going to call him Robert. Robert, as Robert pointed out how Sorry. later on, the Emperor was a magnificent man, for, formal thinking mind, yada yada yada, all these great stuff, he was a terrible father. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. so, dreadful. So, Dad of the Year nomination, never going to happen. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Good Lord, no. <laughs> Good, oh, uh, absolutely not. Hi, this is how, this is how I'm learning. <laughs> So the, dude could, be the dude could have, it. like... Oh, you're doing good. I am retaining, yeah, I which is a miracle within itself. I would like to point that out. I should also point out all the legions and chapters kind of have their own little, um... Problems. Well, they have to, yes. <laughs> However, they're also based on different different fighting groups across history. So, Found Sons have a very Egyptian style to them. Ultramarines are Roman. Pyro Fists are... Knight... Are Germanic Knights. Quote, also unquote. Uh, where, are, isn't that the group that was in fantasy, which is like if the French and the English got together and actually got along? Those are the, the Petonians. Uh, uh, we're, we're not oh, that. No, 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 no. That'd oh. be it. That's that's a conversation for a completely separate stream. I will absolutely front that because they're my main army. Anyway, uh, yeah, well, salamanders are all. I forget what the I forget the salamanders are primarily based on. Um, uh. I'd like to point out that Codex just said you're talking about daddy issues. I'm assuming you're talking about the Emperor of Mankind. <laughs> yeah, that's how yeah. prevalent the opinion yeah. is in the community. The, yeah, this this game is basically just uh, uh, at what stage does daddy issues become everybody's problem? Mm. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, I could relate to this game. So where that's am I it. in this game? Actually, hi. Um, where am I? <laughs> okay. No, no entity. <laughs> Have anyway. you heard of the, uh, the felonids? <laughs> <laughs> I am not a felonid, am I? We'll get there. <laughs> anyway, uh, I said limited time. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, then, then we have Fabulous Hawkboy, Sang Sanguinius. He's the, who's, who literally has a whole holiday dedicated to him. He's also dead. But, uh, of course, Fabulous Hawkboy, Sanguinius is also kind of, I wouldn't say Space Jesus, more like, um... Space Michael. Like the Archangel Michael is the best way to put it. He leads up the Blood Angels, which are... Like I said, are a, lot, a lot of ways, they're kind of like the Salamanders. Comments of Salamanders, the Ultramarines, and the Pyrophists were... Um, and Space Wolves, where... We're back. Yeah, okay. Where basically, they do... 
Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that codex. Uh, the Blood the Blood Angels believe in believe in basically doing the best by humanity. Like, tr like in a lot of ways, they're they're like soft emperor's children, where they want to. They're not dedicated to profession to the point of obsession. More for the point that just they're a bit more easygoing. That they want to protect humanity. They want to spearheaded and basically do showcase that we are we are the best and greatest in them, but we are still a part, very much a part of humanity, and champion its ideals, including the, especially the emperors throughout the galaxy. My brain hurts. Yeah, uh, they're from Ba, which is super fucking irradiated. Oh, that <laughs> so, which also like might be, yeah, which might explain why they're like this. They're basically. San Sanguinius is one of the ones with the obvious mm -hmm. mutation because he has big fuck off wings. He uh, can actually fly, I think. Is he hot? Yes. Yeah. Oh, amazingly, yeah. yes. Oh, yes, he's gorgeous. He's. <laughs> it's like in comparison Pretty. to say um, Fulgrim, he feels like he's 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 someone who doesn't try as hard to look as pretty. Just, but goddamn, the L'Oreal he's using in his hair is amazing. <laughs> oh God, he was born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Yes, exactly. <laughs> now, uh, something to also preface about the Blood Angels is um, they they are just essentially very nice vampires. Okay, so yes. you've already won me over. Well, you see, the whole idea is, and the reason the reason that is because of Sanguinius' death. Sanguinius had the gift of prophecy. Remember, I said uh, some have psychic powers. I Sanguinius think, is one of them. I was gonna say Quasi. I had a f I had a funny feeling something that, because. Hi, this is where my nerdiness kicks in. Uh, hi, cat does know. Cat does somewhat understand Latin, so <laughs> I'm sitting here going, "Sanguine means blood." Yep, we're getting to that. Uh, okay. Sanguinius basically had well, other than having a beef with the blood god Corn, which we'll get to him later. Do they get corn? Flakes? Um, Sanguinius his has a thing where he has kind of a psychic link throughout through all his uh, basically his quasi progeny, the space marines that are created off his gen the gene seed. So. And that's another thing I'm not even getting into right now. No one wants to get into that, gotcha. Yeah. It, it's it's a bunch of warriors, whatever, moving on. Uh, it's it's a long-ass so, process, and it takes a bit of explaining. And there will yeah. be charts. It, yeah. There, I, yes, that requires a chart. Uh, Sanguinius, he, uh, say, how does it go? Other than cracking the back of a greater demon of corn, which is metal as hell, cool. he, he was basically fought up to the final days of the of the um, Horus Heresy, including the part where he had to go up and fight and fight Horus first when they had to board his ship as he bombards Terra and slays his Terra. So what happens is he knew this. He knew this a long time ago that he was going to die hey, defending the Emperor. He did it anyway because he knows his, he knows what his job is and knows that if humanity was to survive and carry forward, he would was going to have to go face some pretty awful consequences. What had was not planned for was the fact that when he died, his death as a Horus, who was superpowered by chaos at that point, undivided into practically a, almost a god himself, basically wiped the floor of him. And mind you, Sanguinius is also one of the ones that's considered the best fighters of all the Primarchs. One of the best. It's, it's, it's very debatable. But yeah, point is though, uh, Horus basically kill broke his back, tossed him to the ground in front of the Emperor and said, Fight fight me. <laughs> I fight he's me too me. far gone. Fight uh me. when he did so, he lays out a psychic death whale that uh Well it had two effects. One was the psychic death whale that caused all the uh all the blood angels to have what's known as, to suffer from two curses. The the red thirst and the black rage. The red thirst is the whole bloodless thing, which leads to the whole they becoming vampires. Uh -huh. like, like closet vampires don't want them into it to keep, keep it very hush hush sort of thing. How many times do they eat rats? Well, considering the rats can walk around and talk. Oh right, Skaven. <laughs> Hi, yes, yes, my fresh cheese. Uh, I'll go on that later. <laughs> but yes, uh, where was I? Oh yeah. Um. So yes, yeah, so that's where the whole bloodless thing went, where. Which it not talked about because rightfully so the Inquisition would look at that and say, "Oh, that's that's heresy. That you're tainted by chaos and kill them, kill them to a man." Uh, the other thing is the Black Rage, which is basically what also leads them to be kind of a little bit more humanized in terms of, of superhumans. Where after a while, it happens at random, but um, af as the Red Thirst takes hold, as fighting goes on, some people. 
that a quiet bit of uh, prosthetic power resurges in their in the sons, and they start thinking they're Sanguinians in the middle of Horus Heresy fighting Horus, with Horus being whichever dumb, sh dumb poor bastard is they're fighting, <laughs> and go full on on Doom Slayer rage to murder them. That sounds cool. Yeah, it's it's very metal, but it's also yeah. once this, once you've gone down this route, there's usually no coming back. So it's like barbarian I, rage, but it ain't don't I, it don't stop coming and it don't stop coming and it don't I, stop coming. I mean, to state it in the most redundant form, <laughs> it is basically a, a, they are trapped in their father leader thing. Yeah, yeah, like a, a, basically his death moment where they're like, "I am him. I must kill." You know. <laughs> So yeah, going... full tear, rip and tear until the job is done. But the yeah. job, is never, job done. is never done. Yeah, but the job yes. is never done. Oh god, I'm actually retaining shit. I don't know how I feel about this. Don't well, they you're, just you're... ship the, those blood angels off to like a coronite planet? Um, usually they if they serve no, first they put them in the in the what's known as the black company, I think. No, death company. They're put into the death company, which comes up a lot. Where it says, Okay, uh this chaplain's gonna take you, he's gonna hurt you out, and you're gonna kill as many people as possible and hopefully die. And if you survive, we lock you away in a tower because you're going to go batshit crazy. Is it a nice tower, at least? It's never really talked about, so no one knows. I hope it's Just don't go there. It could be the prison of Azkaban. We don't know. It, it could Probably be. for the best, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mentors, that's great. Let's live with but, our depression. Anyway. But at the same, at the same time, mm -hmm. it also it's what makes them human because they know this could happen at any time. So, they have to strive to be better than what their flaws make them out to be, which is why I like them so much. Aww. On the other end of the spectrum, we have Lionel Johnson with Dark Angels. Think Templar. Spa uh, Space Knights Templar. I hate them. <laughs> oh, don't worry, it gets worse. <laughs> I love and hate these guys, because uh, the on the list of assholes in the universe, and the Imperium, there are three heads. One is, one is the Inquisition, one is the Adeptus mm -hmm. Cagus, both will be getting to later, third is the Dark Angels in terms of keeping our shit quiet and secret to the point of killing everybody else to keep it secret. So they're, like the in, so they're like what people think the men in black are, not the MIB from the show the movies. We're talking like the the, the, the government guys. Yes, that's more the Inquisition. Oh they are God. more like uh, hey, are one of our factions of our, our uh, Marines, our the US Marines, have a, have a super special secret special forces that uh don't like it when you talk about their stuff to the point where they'll you'll disappear. Ah, uh, black <laughs> if bag. You talk about it. Black bag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, think, think of it as like a CIA black bag. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so also like those Lionel Johnson. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, it gets worse because uh, Lionel Johnson's kind of a prima donna, but he's also he's pretty good. He's just not used to sharing the limelight. He's from the first Legion, which is the first Legion to be created from their gene seed. He you know, the the Primarchs, mm -hmm. and Lionel Johnson is basically. Uh, Richard the Lionheart, I think, or he's based on Richard he, Lionheart. He's, or... basic, he's supposed to be like the greatest of their crusaders. Yeah, so you know, tactical acu tactical acumen that the other Primarchs simply do not possess. It was it was rivaling even that of the Emperor. He would look at the situation and be like, "No, this is what we're doing." He wouldn't need to plan or scheme. He would just look at it and be like, "Okay, we do this." Yeah, um, I guess I now remember. He's basically a combination of King Arthur and uh, Richard Lionheart, essentially, in terms of aesthetics. Aesthetics. Yeah. Aesthetics. Yeah. Like that, the, the, dark, the Dark Angels is his legion there, and their whole big thing is, is yes, they're very knight, like Knight Templar, Knight or just Western medieval knights in style. They are, like the Ultramarines, their GNC is pure. So it has not tainted, corrupted, warped in any way, shape, or form. Uh, by the way, Leo redeemed a hydrate, and all guests have to hydrate as well. Oh, Thank you, I actually need that. Open my Mio. So, the Dark Angels. <laughs> they, their biggest thing is because they're, they've already been very secret from the beginning because they didn't really like outsiders, especially including Terrans. And it only got worse is during, like, just post the Horus Heresy, after, uh... Lionel Johnson and Dark Angels were unable to make it to Terra in time to help defend the Emperor, and basically dealing with routing the Chaos Marines and the Chaos the Traitors Primarchs back, hurting them back to the Warp or just destroying them outright if they could. 
went back home to Caliban. Is it only to find out that uh, the guy, the guy uh, Lionel Johnson, left there to be in charge and to recruit new, to recruit new people. Said, "No, fuck you. You're you're not from you're not from Caliban. We're we're going full traitor, and we're going to run our own empire, Blackjack and Hooker." There's Long black... story short, that did not end well. There's Blackjack Trademark. and Hookers. Yeah, yeah, it didn't go well. Aww. Yeah, warp. Op they opened up a warp portal. Long, long. There's reasons why. It broke apart the planet. The biggest chunk became their ch their uh, fortress monastery, mm -hmm. and a bunch of the the quote unquote fallen the fallen angels, which are the ones that turned traitor, which may or may not be chaos tainted, were spread across space and time. So they're called. They call themselves the Unforgiven because if they ever they fear if anybody ever found out that half the legion turned traitor. Uh, they would be rightly destroyed. <laughs> but to the point it also asks, how many people do we need to kill to prove that we are not that we are truly loyal? Since the jokes of they're closet traitors. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so if you hear that meme that, that will come up a lot as you look them up and talk about them. Okay. So yeah, so to answer your question on that cat, there were blackjack and hookers. Okay. Were <laughs> being the operative. Were. What happened to them? Yeah. They got destroyed. Gotcha. Well, no, they're they still on the show around even up till the forty first millennium. This is like ten thousand years of them finding random traces of people, including Cipher, and that's that's a whole other bag of BS I will get into later. Of love and BS I will get into later. I would like to point out I just finished this artwork and it looks adorable. <laughs> yes, it looks <laughs> great. <laughs> yes, complete. Y'all, Warhammer, me, Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Guess gotta, you... gotta offset it somehow. Listen, listen, yeah. the cute thing offsets the evil. The, the cute offsets Grimdark. It's fine. Yes, yes, yeah. it's the balancing act. It's the balancing act. So, uh, I also have all these pieces I've been needing to finish. So, so we're, we're almost through the almost through all the Primarchs. Uh, Wamis. And, the, and their legions and their relevant and relevant coming primary chapters and whatnot. Uh, Perturabo, who is uh, he's a jewel of shit pail. <laughs> he is both very exacting. Very bl he's uh, as blunt as Royal Dorn, but he does not... He takes rejection even less so. And honestly, if he was just given some more positive reinforcement, he probably wouldn't have turned out traitor. But, that uh, describes, like, all of the traitorous <laughs> sons. Yeah. yeah. If only Daddy loved them more. Okay. I'm if getting... only Daddy got them a really decent child psychiatrist and a fucking nanny. And stop comparing them to his other sons, his good boy sons. <laughs> yeah. If he was not... If the, if the Emperor wasn't such a giant... Molten? Fucking gaping anus. The the Imperium would be in a much better place. I oh, love yeah. how you're just just really angry. <laughs> yeah, because a yeah. lot of problems could have been solved with a decent therapist. The Emperor I mean, is a fucking pillock. I was gonna say, isn't that true with a lot of certain things? It's like if y'all had therapy, you wouldn't have this problem. Yeah, yes. that would solve like ninety percent of issues with the Jedi. <laughs> Yeah. Look, look, uh, looks at the Jedi. Looks at members of the organization. Thirteen. <laughs> if y'all had therapy. <laughs> yeah. And much like uh, Perturabo, you have the Iron Warriors, who also are a bit like the Iron Hands, but they want to replace. They replace out chaotic mutated bits with technology, but they have, they have very little. They have little snow chill. Awesome. They uh. Uh, they're also more they, they're more like the opposite of the Iron Hands in that they are specialized in siege warfare. Yeah, in fact, they have a they have an ongoing, um, much like uh, Warbearers don't like Ultramarines because they kept getting compared to them and being told, why can't you be more like the Blue Boys over here? Why can't you be Pura more like the Yeah, Perarabo and Iron Warriors were treat, were basically compared to the Imperial Fist and saying, you should be more like the Imperial Fist and Rogaldorn. They do things better. And uh, that did not go it well. Didn't go over so well, no. I, mean, I wouldn't it's be in happy either. In canon, they were even regarded like even like as far back as the Horus Heresy. They always people always went, man, why are we digging trenches and stuff? Isn't that the Iron Warriors' job? So yeah. yeah, they get they get shit on a lot and they act accordingly. Poor guys, they need a hug and some therapy. Okay, you don't new rule: I'm not allowed to say they need therapy because it's kind of fucking obvious they need oh. therapy. Oh yeah, not only do they need therapy, they also need to they need to learn to chill because they've also reasons why on the traitor side a lot of horrible things happen. Yay. Yeah, didn't they drop an reasons. asteroid on a planet at one point? Oh yeah, that sounds yes. nice. They, um, yeah. they, they also... <laughs> Demon Kabbalah. End of story. <laughs> don't, we would not answer what that is. <laughs> you don't want to know. Yeah. Anyway. 
But then we got okay. We talked about Lorgarn's War Bears, the ones who like who preached too way too much instead of getting stuff done, and as a result, they worship chaos undivided. Yay. They worship chaos in all things. They worship it to the point they're like space Mormons, but only if you say no, they will uh, show up and beat you with a book to death. So space Scientologists, if they thought. Or what they think, what space, what Scientologists think they are like, because a uh, fun fact for those who don't know, Scientology, the people who do Scientology are supposed to be quote unquote aggressive towards anyone who's ru rude to anyone who does Scientology, aka there's this one guy on TikTok who actually took the, uh, the handle, the Church of Scientology, just to make sure the Church of Scientology wouldn't get on TikTok. <laughs> and apparently they keep getting, he keeps getting quote unquote threats by them, but he keeps laughing because he just sees these people going to their you know, um, uh, their, uh, mailbox and dropping off the letters of, you know, trying to be threatening, and he just keeps laughing. Finally, yes. <laughs> Except so, armed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so again, Very heavily armed. So space what Scientologists think they are. They don't, they're yes. not that threatening. You're a bunch of guys. The thing is, they, they kind of started out by <laughs> thinking the Emperor was a god. They were convinced of it. Despite him saying, look, gods don't exist, despite the fact he knew they did, and didn't want anybody believing in gods to, like, juice them up before he killed them. Uh, yeah. quite, so, uh, quite literally, it's the Life of Brian meme of, he's the messiah, it's like, I'm not the messiah, he's the messiah! I'm yeah. not the messiah! Okay, yeah. see, you just said Life of Brian and I understood everything so easily. Yeah, then. pretty much. Oh, yeah. They're the seen. reason the Emperor is freaking worshipped as a god in his own Imperium, yeah. which he founded <laughs> to try and kill gods. <laughs> The level but of yeah, irony like, is so strong. I oh, know. yeah. It's Isn't it great? Age. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, uh, Jagaharai Khan and the White Scars, they're the Zumi boys who believe, who are basically space Broom. Mongols, space Huns, not sure. Point is, though, they love getting on bikes, running down traitors and heretics. Mostly traitors. I was literally going to say if the Space Marines had a biker gang. <gasps> yeah, they, they are that. the biker gang. Yeah, they are the, uh, the speed gets or the uh, biker gangs of of armed forces when it comes to the space marines and they love it to death that sounds fun though yeah basically uh during the horus heresy when they were supposed to be defending the the fortress that uh Rogo Dorn set up they got on their bikes rode down and said zoom motherfuckers <laughs> and rode down and said we are not giving them it <laughs> oh i love these guys um they sound fun so yeah, it's... they sound fun to play I'm, this is where i go they sound fun to play and everyone's like don't play them it's not that fun oh <laughs> oh don't worry we got three more who are not who are not fun trademark Aww. conrad conrad cruz who is also dead is the uh, fucking the edge boy mcgee yeah edge boy number one <laughs> he's mm -hmm. the one that's basically hey you remember how Dr dracula was known as uh the impaler about the vampire stuff yeah Vlad the impaler i'm fully aware of Vlad yeah, that... the impaler yeah, we, we made him we made him Batman and we also made him a super duper human. I'm sorry, in what? Primark. I'm sorry. Yes. What? So <laughs> Batman and Vlad the Impaler had a baby. And that's yes. that's it. Yeah, he, he is and more it is just as terrifying as it sounds. It does he sound horrifying. Got, he got dropped on a planet of criminals and Oh uh, he's also like Bane! Said, he's also Bane! Yes. <laughs> and he basically became a boogeyman. To keep to basically keep the planet in order and stop being terrible. I love yeah, how yeah, he's literally himself. Batman on steroids. And he's the, Bane. The, the, he's Bane. And, yes, and the Night Lords absolutely believe in terror tactics. They don't. They don't believe in straight up fights. They believe in scaring the shit out of you, terrifying, you, and then once you're weakened by that, come in and, and slit your throat. Oh yeah, they're they're all about the uh, the example. If somebody is fucking around in their territory, they will string them up. Rather than, you know, make it a quiet kill. You'll die quietly, but you'll be found and everybody will see. So yep. They'll know what happened to you. So the term... Sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, so, uh, excuse me, this is how I help retain things so I can get a good idea. Did any of you guys play Assassin's Creed 2? Yes. Yeah, I know of it, yes. So do you remember the scene where basically Ezio kills that one guy? Not only does he kill him stealthily, what he does is he ties him up into a piece of rope and hangs him out of a church, hangs him out of a tower so everyone can see what he did. Yes. To lead to examples you may, to the people. They that... make examples. Okay, yes. okay. The, the, Good the idea. term I think that best sums them up, since my job is to kind of dumb this down. For cat's into, brain. In, in, into like a, a retainable portions. Psychological warfare. The that, thing I that. do in D&D, &D. gotcha. 
Psychological also, warfare is the best summary. And by the way, the reason why we call them the Edge Boys is because they hate themselves. They uh, hate their Primarch, who also hates himself. They hate Chaos, but they hate the Imperium a bit more. <laughs> and they so, hate Daddy. How much MC, yes, how much MCR daddy. do they listen to on the daily? What if they're Edge Boys? Can I listen to... Don't worry, we're we're, get, we're getting to the Raven Guard, <laughs> who actually has reasons to be upset. <laughs> what? Oh. Oh, don't worry. I'll get to one in a bit. Uh, oh, now we get to the maddest boy. Edgelords. We get to the maddest boy, Angron. Oh. Angron has just never, <laughs> never smiled in his life, my, in my opinion. Don't, don't at me. I, I'm just now going to just say, Zilla, I now understand why you were excited about that joke character concept I came up with when I said I want to play that in Warhammer. I'm starting to understand why you're so excited about that. Angron is only... A smidgen happy if he's spilling something's blood, and he's extremely angry at Dad because let's let's put it this way: a um, long time ago, Angron as a baby got dropped on a planet of basically a Rome. If Rome had nothing but slave gladiatorial arenas, he had a bunch of um, he got cybernetic hands with nails in his head to make him constantly mad. It was I, think, I think we need to go for... back a little bit further for the context on that. Oh. While he was still a baby, he was captured and given an implant that makes him angry all the time. It's called the nails. Why I guess the bush of nails. Did they do yeah. that to <sighs> a fucking babe? Oh god, this is because crazy. slave. Because Grimdark. Because <laughs> Edge Lords. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I feel like the context needed to be there because a full-grown Primarch could never have been captured. That's true. It's, I also yeah. have to point out all the traitor, all the planets that turn, that serve as home worlds for the legions that turn traitor are exterminated. They've been nuked to, into non-existence. I'm going. So to don't worry about it. That place ain't no more. Okay, my D and D Frank Miller idea that I came up with is going to be nothing compared to Warhammer. I have now just accepted this. <laughs> yes. So his legion is the world eaters, and their job is to basically. Not only besiege a planet, but also utterly wreck it up and destroy everything. They are not kind. They they fell they fell the corn for a reason. The war god. Yeah, and, I, uh, I think probably out of all of them, he was the one that fell first and the hardest. I would definitely agree, the hardest. It was going to. It was a matter of time. Yeah, and it's all because and a lot of it has to do with the fact that he just wanted to, when uh, Angron led a slave rebellion to kind of. Because he was done with that plan's bullshit, the the emperor had found him, said no, you're joining me. Angron said no, and the emperor teleported him up during the battle, so all his slave brothers and sisters died without him. Yeah, he literally did a fucking Spartacus, freed the slaves, you know, started a rebellion, and then got snatched away just before completion. Because uh, the, the emperor kind didn't of a dick. want to deal with his shit. He was just like, no, I have more important shit to deal with than your fucking freedom. Or the freedom of your boys that you raised and fucking freed. He it's could have easily about. invaded the planet and fucking, so I understand all you know, freed, correctly. you know, He's Angron and all of Angron's dudes. He could have easily done it. He had a fleet in orbit. And he decided, no, I don't have the time for this. Not to mention the Golden Warriors that could easily... They're monsters in and of themselves. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, he All I'm saying is there was no reason he couldn't have done it. He just decided not to. He just said, uh, I don't have time for this. Why? I don't know. <laughs> uh, this uh, sounds I laugh. Everyone enjoy the whalmer. This will offset the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I laugh I could, because it's ironic. It's stupid. I could wait for the battles to be over. Alternatively. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Alternatively, I have uh, I need to have a cup of tea with uh, this planetary governor so I can take over his planet, let's system away. So eh. <laughs> anyway, no one actually knows why he did what he did when he could have done anything else, but he did. Anyway, on to the other second edge boy number two, Corvus Corvax. How it's many like Corvus, are there? Corvus Cor. Yeah, much... I mean he had twenty kids. The odds of it being only three of them are actually pretty good. Oh uh, yes, that's good to know. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, he's 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 the other one. He's kind of the one when you, when you play black, um, uh, the black parade. You're, you're going to see Cor. He's going to see him pop out of the shadows. Excuse me, grab his the C note. Ding. Oh, there he is. Corvus Corvax is like I basically it's from Deliverance. He landed on Deliverance, which I think is perpetually covered in night. Sort of. I, there's two other plans I think think at least that is a thing. Point is though, him and the Raven Guard are all about um, stealth. They're the guys who sneak behind the lines and. Do all the wet works 
kind of missions they're the, they're the, of allegiance. They're, they're, the, they're like the Thieves Guild and or the uh, Dark Brotherhood in Skyrim? Oh, yeah. it's more deemed, a little bit of both, but uh, more of the Thieves Guild, essentially, okay. as well. Okay. Like, yeah, there's there's special operations. Okay, there's... It's kind of nonsense. Spec Ops. I say that because, I, yeah, I say that knowing the Imperial Assassins exist. Getting to those guys later. Oh, God, how many more are there? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. the reason why he the reason why he's edgy, partly because of upbringing, partly because, mostly because, during the Horus Heresy, there was a little thing called the Drop Site Massacres. A little thing. It's yeah, called a massacre. Yeah, yeah. Basically, seven legi- uh, three legions turned traitor first. I think four, five or six others. There's drop. No, I Fully half five. the legions ended up turning, so nine of them. Yeah. No, I'm saying three turned traitor first. The other ones dropped down. Turned out a bunch of the buddies they were dropping with were also traitors. Yeah, a bunch Those of the second the, wave, yeah. Yeah, so the Salamanders, the, the Iron Hands, and the Raven Guard all dropped with. With um, I forget who they draw with, but basically, yeah, the other trade, most of the other traders that were, the P- legions that turned traitor, draw with them, and basically, as they ran forward to go fight the traders they knew about, the traders they didn't shot them in the back, <laughs> square in the back, and they had to force retreat, and they lost a lot of people. This sounds so. friendly. Okay, so, some people retreated. The lion and his retinue decided to hole up and wait and see what happened. The oh, yeah. Gorgon of the Iron Hands did his fucking job and kept pushing to deal with the traitor. Okay? I just want that on record. <laughs> yes, the I Iron know. Hands <laughs> did what with the Iron Hands did their goddamn job. I feel like Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I just feel like that moment where it's like, I was there. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of PTSD to the point where um, a lot, of, a majority of Raven Guard got wiped out during that. They were rebuilding during most of the Horus Heresy, and they had they basically whatever they had left followed up in routing chaos. But they're kind of upset because they, they they weren't there in terror. They weren't doing much. They were essentially rebuilding and fighting with Can, and to the point where Corvus, of course, Corvus decided to speed things up a bit and use some dangerous genetic fucky wucky to do so. So you say genetic fucky wucky and I'm already knowing that's a bad idea and I'm not even in this game. Yeah, basically instead of like taking like like a lot it takes a long time to build to actually make a space marine proper. Uh-huh. And they're considered the more mass produce of soup of the superhumans that the Emperor made. Uh-huh. He he had he had fast forward twice to get a, enough people up in time to actually do some good. And he had to. And he, there was repercussions. <laughs> I was about to say. Now, what happened? To the point where it actually kind of fucked up their gene seeds. So their gene seeds a little messed up as a result. And they had very few numbers to spend the chapters when uh, after everything was set and done. <laughs> but yeah, they're they're still do their <laughs> job pretty decently. But uh, they kind of like accepted the whole turn of the chapters, accept the ghost authorities without much fighting because they were tired. Okay. And lastly, we have Alpharis Omegadon of the Alpha. Does someone else want to take a, take that over while I drink some water? Please let this okay, boy hydrate. So Please let the helmet hydrate. Um, basically, uh, now, I'm really, my dog just whined for no reason. Just sitting here. Um, he wants to talk about the space drinker. wolves. Also hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yes. Now, I don't know a whole lot about the individual legions. Uh, does anyone else know about Alpharius? Although, I, I, can, I, can do on, I do know I do know a bit about Alpharius. Uh, essentially, I Alpharius have been going on quite a while about the Primarchs, and we have a lot of things outside of the okay. Imperium to cover. So yeah. let's uh, let's try to speed things up. Okay, so yeah. real quick, Alpharius is the chameleon. All right. Anybody you want to impersonate, Alpharius can do it. He was one of the only Primarchs who wasn't, like, eight fucking feet tall. He was the size of a regular Space Marine, which made it really handy for him when he decided he was just going to hide among his Legion and sometimes other people's, and his sons took after him for it. So, the Alpha Legion are all about doing the... They're the the tricky boys. They're, they're the war crimey boys who wear other people's uniforms and do the false flag attacks. Agent yeah. 47. Oh, no yeah. worse. Yeah, no. 
No, yeah, j just like, ah, man, it would be really convenient if, if you thought that I was this other guy murdering you, so you go after them instead of me. Really convenient, that. Anyway. <laughs> you know? But right now, the accepted battle cry of the Alpha Legion is for the Emperor. Ah, I know this because, one. Because, yeah, some people still cling to the desperate hope that they are actually loyal and just playing the really, really, really long game to bring down chaos from the inside. To these people, I say, you are very, very wishful and foolish. I would point out that they probably have, are so far up trying to do that, they don't know anymore. On, a, on average, they probably don't know who they're actually working with, which is why. Zinch probably doesn't trust them, he's not their dedication. <laughs> Let's be real, none of them know if their dad is still around or just hiding among the Legion. Oh god. We don't yeah. know if that fuck is still around or not. Dad we don't even know sure if he's one fucker or two, because they thought there he for a while there it's believed he was twins. One was Alcaris, one was Omega. Oh god. My yeah, yeah. Rupert e Robert even freaking killed one of them and it's and he still doesn't know if he actually killed a Primarch or just another space marine. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's how into it they get. They're like method actors of the highest order. Uh. I, also, I also have to point out the Inquisition likes to tell people, the Alpha Legion doesn't exist. Stop asking about them. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's the best way to make your problems go away. Uh, what is this thing? That does not exist, and if you talk about that, we will have to have meetings. We will yeah, have to get the Dark Angels office. involved. We don't want the Dark Angels involved. You really want <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> Do we really want to have this meeting right now? None of us want this meeting. That means we have to go get coffee and donuts, and we have to actually get good donuts because this is a serious meeting. Yeah. So they, they took the whole, you know, I am fucking Spartacus thing way too fucking far. And that's the Alpha Legion. Yeah. And that's the Adeptus of Stars in a whole, because they all, the traitors became traitor warbands, and Spaceman Legions became Spaceman chapters. Now, when does the happy stuff happen? Because I'm smelling For lack of happiness. Happy stuff. Oh, oh we're not divorced yet. What is the happy thing? Happy stuff. <laughs> we happy stories in the entire thing, and we're not covering those today. What? Happy stuff only happens on the Paradise Planets, and even then. No, let's see mm. where it takes oh. us. Anyway, who oh, wants to cover the Imperial Guard? We have a bit of a bit redeem. What? What's a bit redeem? The redeem was. The, the Alpha Legion can best be described as, and it hurts to say this, Among Us. Yes. Yeah. As, yeah. Also, we had Luxord talking in my ear, and it was making wow. me happy, and I was having a moment of pure happiness after all the edge dark. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, there's a lot of that. So oh, after yeah. that stream, uh, before we get to my next bit, who wants to take the Imperial Guard? They are the meat grinder. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> they are... The Imperial Guard is essentially the culmination of everybody in the galaxy joining the military. I don't like they, this. When, when you want a problem solved in the bluntest way possible, you just send the Imperial Guard. And they're made up of the Navy and the actual army itself. So they're like the Marines? They're no, not yet. Yes. They're they're the, yeah. the Navy is... Army. The normal Humis with some mutants who were sent in to die. Yeah, they're known as the Emperor's Hammer for a reason. And the hammer is we we don't worry if we drown them with enough bodies, eventually the problem will be solved. So the reason there's so many Imperial Guard is because there are literally billions of worlds in the Imperium. Now, Elf, Elf, every single one of those billions of worlds, there are billions and billions of people living on each of those. Now, when you are a world belonging to the Imperium, you give unto the Lords of Terra a tithe. It can be mineral wealth, it can be money, it can be armor or material in the form of, you know, guns, <laughs> ammo, tanks, ships, all that jazz. Thank you. But for anybody who can't provide something more valuable, there is always the Blood Tithe, and that is the Imperial Guard. A world is expected to give a regiment of equipped and trained Imperial Guard unto the Imperium every few years. I don't like this. Mm -hmm. This sounds like the, uh, well, there's a few countries that actually do the whole, you are required by law to be in the military for this much period of time, blah blah blah, you know what I'm talking about. You desire to know more. <laughs> I do not desire to, to know fair, more! <laughs> to 
<laughs> to be fair, ninety nine percent of the worlds that give Imperial Guard unto the Imperium are entirely volunteer outfits. Either yes. people who are too poor or unable to do anything else on their world, or in some cases, getting away, f uh, getting out of a prison sentence and serving in a penal legion. So, again, the U.S. military, when it... <laughs> Me cracking on the U.S. military, I can do that. So, like, the U.S. military, where basically oh, yeah. they prey upon anyone who is unable to do it because of being of lower-income family, da 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 Oh yeah. Essentially, oh, yes. They're taking advantage. Hell of a lot, okay. Yeah, hell of a lot better than being press gang bounced by by and large. <laughs> but yeah. not much better. You'll have a few months of, you know, somewhat okayish life before you're thrown into a tyrannid hive storm. Oh goody, I so, love that. I hate well, it. We'll a lot talk of people about later. That's yeah, my a lot of people like them because they are literally regular for the most part, regular people, given a, the equivalent of an AK forty seven in laser gun form. And uh some crappy flak armor and says, "Now go hold the go hold the line," <laughs> and yeah. uh, there is there's there's a lot of bravery to who they are. My do their job, yeah, and, and they come from a multitude of different worlds. Like we said, you have the ice world of Valhalla, where they are basically trained and and fight in ice conditions. They are that yep. specialized that they basically are sent in any time that there's an ice world involved. You have the death cores of Krieg, where, where you Blown have soldiers, who, yeah. Yeah, trench warfare soldiers who are just fighting for repentance because they rebelled so long ago and literally will die for any reason if it's for the Emperor's name. I they won't do something or stop doing something unless they are given a direct order. So, there was an example of a hive world that rebelled. The Kriegsmen showed up. Four <laughs> fucking <laughs> regiments showed up to start because someone lost the order to they were just being told okay keep sending reinforcements there by the end of the war 14 regiments of kriegsmen were there the the the, the five surrendered five years beforehand but because the man who'd been given the surrender had died before he got back they kept shelling the place for five more years in the nine-year span that that colony was destroyed, no life could be found after the Kriegsmen were done. That yeah, the, sounds horrifying. I don't like it here. The Kriegsmen are kind of batshy crazy in their own rights, but uh, I mean, their entire worlds are radiated at this point. They're like yeah. two steps away from becoming Necron. I love to point out the graduation promise. ceremony is to fight one regiment against the one that didn't quite make the cut. I'm also to point out the commissars, who are the guys, the political officers, whose whole job is to make sure the guardsmen stand in line and do their job. The scary thing in the back of the line that will shoot you if you run, have to restrain the cri the Kreisman from running forward or doing something, blood to, blood, to put it bluntly, to go sacrifice himself for the Emperor. Because sacrifice it would be wasteful thing. if they all went at the same time. Yes. Yeah. And the Kreisman don't care. Uh, and, the commissar is the voice of reason, you are dealing with something and special to transition from that that's actually a perfect transition the commissars are basically the handlers of these different regiments they they essentially guide the regiments into certain battles and have and have every ability to just say i will shoot you in the fucking back if you do not do what i say with exceptions of course that yeah. being people like Caiaphas kane who essentially do use that threat to get people to do what they do, but also are human enough to understand that these are people they're talking to. They, they will they will treat them to some degree okay. But most of them are just batch of crazy, power-hungry mo monsters that will just do whatever they want. A lot of them get that way, but the entire point of the Commissariat is to inspire the soldiers to greater deeds of heroism and to hold the line. Which doesn't really work for the Kriegsmen, because you, you can try to inspire them, but you're just it, you're just trying to inspire a bunch of g gas masks staring at you, wondering what you're doing. Yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of like throwing kerosene onto an inferno. <laughs> they don't need more motivation. If to the point where the commissar starts showing signs of cowardice in their opinion, they will shoot the commissar. Which is yep. ballsy. Yeah. Uh, and yet I'm the Kriegsmen, the if they get punished, still wouldn't care. They'll just birth another regiment and send them there. Uh... Oh, then, like I said, then, then you I have the cat. You have the. Uh, oh, I says. 
But yeah, th then you have to cash in jungle flares. Their whole thing is about jungle fighting. Basically, think of an army of Rambo, which in happens to include actual, almost certainly Rambo just given supernatural. F don't, almost supernatural. Don't give Rambo uh, supernatural. The immortal hero himself. Yeah, uh, so the catching jungle fires, they're, they're one of my second favorites outside the Armageddon Steel Legion. And for the Imperial Guard, their their job is basically go into jungle warfare, fight as hard as you can, and win. And they do that very well. Or they even sneak up on. They basically go and sneak up on trying to sneak up on Tyranids, including Luthers, which is damn hard to do. And ba so, yeah, basically think U.S. Marines and Korea and, Korea and um. And Vietnam, and you got an idea. <laughs> yeah, so much edge. Yeah. They are the ones who. They also routinely tell the commissars to fuck off. Doing. <laughs> Says was asking me how was I doing, and I was just like, I'll just write a message. Secret. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, and Sly Marbles, the uh, he comes from that particular branch of the Imperial Guard. He's the one that basically. No one knows how he gets the plans. He just gets there and becomes Rambo. <laughs> if you well, draw first blood. using his back muscles. Yeah. Even space marines fear Sly Marbo. <laughs> Why is my oh, I don't think they fear him, but they definitely respect the man. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's right. They're not programmed to feel fear. I forgot. Yeah. Then you have uh, the basically the if the ultramarines are the poster boys for the Adept Astartes, space marines. You have the Cash and Shock. Um, was it not Shock Dreams? The, uh, I'm always. Why am I screwing up the name all of a sudden? <laughs> Anyway. Uh, Cadians. There we go. There it's go. the Cadians. Um, they're from Cadia. They're basically the they're basically the template most that our Imperial Guard regiments are formed under are formed upon. The Cadian shock troops. Their whole thing is basically they are a gated community sort of armed troops that whose gate they're supposed to be defending is the Eye of Terra. Basically, hell. Can we? <laughs> their go job there? is to stop hell from come from expanding and basically causing chaos everywhere. So I'm saying a very anti-chaos thing. In a sense, I am a chaos entity. I feel like this world would not like me. Oh, well, yeah. The, <laughs> the, the Imperium, Imperium, they have Imperium would not like The Imperium would not. Okay, the Imperium so, does not like me. There, there are other warp entities outside the Chaos God, so... Let's, uh... I think this is a good time for a quick little break. That's a smart idea. At, my, my brain needs to decompress. Yeah. That's true, because I got the Inquisition next. If there are any... Any questions? Um, and then I just want to check in. How long are you planning to go? Because we still have... I'm good. I have, have nothing to do today. I have nothing. I planned this. I have nothing. I expected this to be a very long session. I have a shit ton of doodles I need. I can work on to help me keep focus. Do not worry. We are good. And if all else fails, I break out the really complicated artwork to work on while, while listening to you guys do a talk. Do not yes. worry. I'm fine. Um, probably going forward, we should probably just avoid sub factions. Yeah. Um, those are things that can be explored on a later date on Cat's yeah. own time. Please. Yeah. Uh, the let's just focus on broad strokes. Really broad. So like, 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 this is how level of broad stroke we want. If you're watching my stream right now, let's. That might work if I had actually the actual big brush. Broad. This right, level. I, <laughs> I can do. I can do since I actually have written material instead of what I'm remembering off the top of my head for everything else. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. So, uh, I'll take this next bit, and then I can base. Then I have to go check out my grammar. Obviously. Also, so this will give everyone a nice breather from me for a bit. Thank you, thank you. I love how the chat is like, give Cat a hug. Sorry, I'm late. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, yes, Katie broke itself broke before the guard. Katie instead. Ooh, rah rah. Yep, yep, yep. Katie uh, stands. The, uh, the planet broke before the guard did. I broke. I'm broken. Someone help me. Give me a cookie. Is there a cookie? Anyway. Speaking of assholes, I, and, half, and part of the reason why the galaxy is the way it is, especially the Imperium. I thought we my were... faction. Okay. Also, I've been it's... put in the orb of containment. I don't know why. What did I do? I'm just. You're being protected. Protect you from us. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> so you have the Inquisition, the boogie men and women of the Imperium, lowly beacons of humanity's might, or the biggest assholes in the galaxy. You decide. It's. Like I said, and they are part of the reason why everything is so terrible in the Imperium, and that state is in fact terrible, give or take. Incredible. Basically, the, how everyone is down is saying they, the the Inquisition was founded by by the Sigilite, Malkor the Sigilite. He's a distant descendant of the Emperor. Their whole job is to go 
basically where you have all these massive superhuman men and, and stuff and whose whole job is uh, is to take down the big threats their job is to find to deal with asking why finding the nasty bits of the galaxy that can't be covered by those things by the bigger guys and dealing with it <laughs> they're uh no the cookies they're also, not make it into the containment no they're yeah aww um, they're also charged of supervising and monitoring the rest of the Imperium because, in their own words, their powers derive from the Emperor himself, and only the Emperor himself can countermand them. In <coughs> yes, the vegetable. Only the vegetable can tell them what not to do, and he's kind of not there. He's kind of a vegetable. What yeah, kind doesn't of vegetable? have a text-to-speech device set up yet. Yeah. No. So they can basically requisition anyone from a lowly menial to a planetary governor and even space marine. Although in the Spaceman's case, they usually have to act. Because uh, they also... Because a lot of them are, te- are very much tempted to tell the Inquisition to either fuck off directly, like the Space Wolves, or politely say, no, we're busy. <laughs> Sorry, we're not here please right call- now. We're doing more important shit. Please, fi- please file please file, and you'll be pro- your order will be processed shortly. <laughs> and by shortly, we mean th- four to six business days. So, uh, so this also includes Imperial ships and basically everything in between. They also hold the power to... Co- to to basically, if they find a planet wanting, to declare it's Terminatus, which is the world's word death is. sentence. Yep, I know that, <laughs> that comes up a lot. I know that outside one. the fandom. <laughs> yeah, so they don't they don't do so lightly, but they only usually do it when all all else is lost. But it happens. Considering we're dealing with billions upon billions, of yeah, it happens a lot. <laughs> but generally, it's supposed to not be too much because that is <laughs> also when, wasting Imperial's resources. When we say it happens a lot. It, it, it is a large number, but as a percentage, it is an almost infinitesimally small figure. Because while each of the while there are lots and lots of worlds, they are we're not finding more. They are yeah. a precious resource that can never be recovered. They would rather waste billions and billions of guardsmen's lives to retake a planet than drop exterminatus on it. That's it is nice the last know. resort. That's yeah, nice to it's know. it's basically cauterizing a wound. The wound, will, the thing can't grow back, but it's also burnt to a crisp. Is it a nice crisp at least? Like you know, like the like the burnt bits in barbecue. No. It's not like burnt bits no. in barbecue. No, no we, we don't have, we're not allowed to have nice things. You, it's it's yeah. charcoal. You took iron charcoal. You took the meat. You poured vast. Uh, you poured freaking like gasoline on it, and then just turned the stove on and left it on for the rest of the evening. That, that's yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah. There are, these are also the people that make the hard decisions saying, hey, uh, a bunch of demons show up this planet and people aren't supposed to know about chaos. Cause them, it might cause somebody in that group to start worshipping and summoning more demons. So they, they do the really awful stuff of like, uh, euthanizing the entire planet's population, even if they win. So, yeah, they they are largely jerks, but for different, but for different a lot of reasons, a lot of different reasons. So, skipping forward a bit, their organizations divide into into different orders, known as ordos. Three major and a dozen or so minor ones, give or take when they show up. Up, um, their chamber militants and the philosophies that they follow. Also, Gorgura S- telling me basically Halo Covenant planet glassing means nothing to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah basically. Yeah, I know. I caught that reference. Uh, I'm just yeah, that. Up. But we have three ways of doing it. <laughs> Yeah. But that's that's more minutia. Uh, so you have the Ordo Malleus, which is the demon hunters of the Inquisition, and also the demon, the warp, and its effects to corrupt and destroy the Imperium from within and without, the enemy beyond. They are the most overt of the big three uh, Ordos, and they generally tend to bring a hammer to deal with, each, with their issues, it's rather than uh, yeah. doing things like subtly. <laughs> is subtle even a word on their planet? Uh, Not it is for... Uh, not for this Ordo. <laughs> Basically, the point is that if uh, Ordo Malice shows up, something terrible has gone wrong. Even worse, worse so they are Chamber Melanin the Grey Knights, the elite chapter of Space Marines in my first 40k army, and are entirely dedicated to fighting and slaying chaos and demons of the war, wherever they manifest. They are so... They are not only just they're trained to a skill well beyond that of Space Marines, each and every one of them is a powerful psyker in their own right, and are harmful... Baleful to the very powers of the warp. So demons can't even be around them without suffering pain. 
and that's literally and there's only about a thousand or so of them and their whole job is go across the galaxy kill demons so uh yeah the great eyes show up something has gone terribly wrong i generally refer to them as the warp janitors of the galaxy prove me wrong i'm not gonna because i can't go argue with you on your statement <laughs> For I know nothing. For I am dumb. I am not dumb. Yep. I am just smooth-brained. Oh, God, my brain. Then you have the alien hunters, or the Ordo Xenos. Their job is investigating, cataloging, defeating the various Xenos you know, threats, a.k.a. the enemy without. They're more eccentric, because they're more likely to spend a lot of years and decades traveling and living in non-human space, learning whatever they can to exploit and destroy any Xenos threat, any Xenos they consider a threat to the wider Imperium. Um, they... They can have l lesser, like, they can, some of them are not, like, all Xenos are bad, and, and therefore they must be destroyed, but a lot, a few of them are, quite a few of them are, it, that's more in philosophy, so, damn, I will get to that later. No, no philosophy. <laughs> okay. Philosophy's pretty simple. Some of them are more interested in exploiting Xenos than just killing all of them. Oh, it depends exactly. how Puritan they are. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I will get to Puritan and Radicals, and that's usually where I stop at. <laughs> okay. Um, their chamber militant is the Death Watch, which instead of just being a regular chapter of Space Marines, it basically has their own planet or own Crusader fleet, whatever. And instead of doing the normal Space Marine thing, we'll take take kids, turn them into super hu superhuman super soldiers, and have them go kill stuff. They recruit from all the various different chapters. Just take their vets or the blood or the blood claws, the greenies of the Space Wolves, because again, Space Wolves hate the Inquisition. And they're basically form them as the Avengers or XCOM. Wait. And they will. <laughs> is is that the like, the video game? Yeah, XCOM the video game. Yeah, that's that's usually most people tend to think of the Death Watch is that they are. Okay. They are spe they are the special forces of the of the Inquisition or the Xeno specifically. Their whole job is hey, this is this some weird stuff. You can't just send an army of Space Marines or Imperial Guard to deal with. We need to be a bit more precise. Send in the kill a kill team of the Death Watch, and they will take care of it. Like as a, as a specialist, as a special ops, a spec ops team does, and they're very good at it. Okay, I'm kind of understanding. Here's the part you're gonna love. We have lastly of the three major orders, we have the Order Horrectus, the Witch Hunters. Okay, I'm awake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> their their jobs is to deal with every the enemy within, or basically everything the other two don't cover, which is. Traitors, mutants, witches, rogue psychers, and, um, heretics, as well as people who are fucking around way too much in the Imperium and wasting resources. They are only concerned with the enemy within. They deal with stuff that comes from the bulk of humanity that can destabilize the Imperium, like Gogar Vandry. And one does, one does not, as a point of, one does not necessarily need to be a chaos mutant or worshiper or be manipulated by Xeno's powers to do a lot of do a lot of harm. Just be crazy and or influential enough to do so. Uh-huh. They, uh, they've been around for a bit, but they basically came in the province and to monitor the Elysiarchy, the state, the state church of the Imperium, which worships the Emperor as a god. Right. And alongside them is their chamber militant, the, Adir the Adeptus Sororitas, or the Sisters of Battle specifically. Yay! My domain! They, I know this so, one! <laughs> yep. They are the standing army of the Elysiarchy after the events of in the Reign of Blood. Basically, Gogar Vandry was a was a imagine, if you will, the Secretary of State also wanted to be Space Pope. Wait, but it was what? also <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So basically he he was he's super crazy, decided to recruit a bunch of space nuns as his personal army through trick deceit through deception and trickery. They got revealed during that when his shit became too awful to bear. And the head of the order shot Gogar Vandry in the head. And after that, they were basically, the Elysian Archive said, you can't have any, quote, I, this is the direct quote, you cannot have any men under arms, so they cannot maintain a standing army, per se. Uh -huh. They flaunt that by keeping the, uh, keeping the Sisters of Battle, whose whole job is to be a standing army. But since they're not men, well, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so basically but, the whole no man born from woman can kill me, Please, uh, someone it, put in that scene from Lord of the Rings. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, even the person who implemented the the, uh, the decrees basically played a blind to it, knowing that they, you, you can't have Imperial Guard defending all the holy sites, all the uh, give all the words of faith, and all the other nonsense the Elysiarchy likes to do. Who 
and just have him constantly on 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 staff taking up resources and not spending time with the Imperium also needs them. So this works out pretty pleasantly for everybody. Also then the Dungeons of Guns would absolutely wreck anybody who uh who told them otherwise. <laughs> Considering that the the Nuns of Guns were holding off like in their full force, holding off several Space Marine chapters when we had to go deal with Gogur Vandry and his nonsense. Yay! Space Guns. It's yeah, they're they're regular humans, I should I might add. For <gasps> super like on the surface. <laughs> yes, they are for the most part regular human beings. They're trained to an exceptional skill beyond that of normal Imperial Guardsmen. Because they're, you know, elastic order with with armed forces, go figure. But they're also because of their faith how much faith and zeal they have in what they do, they essentially manifest as uh, miracles that lets them put them on the same fighting scale as space marines. Which is dope. So how do I so, sign yeah. up? How do, how do I how do I how do I sign up? Oh, yeah. I just cracked uh, my arm. They're generally recruited from. Well, I, I can go into that later. That's that's a lot more minutia. I will. Minutia later. Cover. Minutia yeah. later. But yeah, they are very. They are of the chamber militants. They have problems under them, and they are very good at what they do, which is punish the witch, punish the heretic. Punish traitors and punish anything that threatens you, and as well as monitor the Lucyarchy from that bullshit nonsense from four millennia back, which is why the that the order corrected the witch hunters like them so much because they basically their jobs overlap. All right, uh, last part before the closing is <coughs> philosophies. You basically Inquisition is split to two major cuts. <laughs> that is Puritan and radicals. Puritans believe the emperor for the most part. The Emperor is right, he is a god, to test and revile the dark forces of war, do not attract aliens, do not tolerate mutants, heretics, and witches, so on and so forth, blah 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 blah. Their job, their whole thing is, they take that, they believe the status quo of the Imperium is, no matter how fucked up, flawed, or poorly implemented it is, is what the Emperor wanted. And we should keep doing that. Uh huh, I see. For the most part, the well, logic. for the most part, they're kind of dumb like that, except for the Thorians, but that's another, that's a discussion for another day. They are the most vel they are the most zealous to divide and most inquisitors start off in this camp. Then you have the radicals. I'm the radicals are those who've deviated <laughs> and said, maybe everything the Emperor laid out or maybe hell is kinda of fucky. <laughs> we should not be doing this. The problem is they don't know when to stop. <laughs> and they don't stop coming uh, and they don't stop coming and they don't stop coming. Pretty much. Some yeah. yeah, basically it goes from minor deviants to to basically, hey man, we should destroy the Imperium so we can build something better. Or use the, the tools of the enemy, which will absolutely corrupt you. <laughs> Including the warp nonsense. They, uh... There's, also, there's, a, there's a reason why I... I why most... There's a saying in most Inquisition. An old Inquisitor who's a Puritan has no brain. While a young Inquisitor that is a radical has no soul. It's basically, for the most part, the as the Inquisitor grows older, he generally lean into a radical camps. If they still, if they don't, they're pretty blunt and stupid, and yeah, they deserve all the shit <laughs> they get. The radicals, however, are believe more in exploiting the resources of the enemy, and that leads to, and like no one wants to be found as a radical because then you'll get shot into the sun. A sun, I should point out. Which one? One sun. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Near a sun. <laughs> into yep. What's what's that? You want to use a demon sword to go fight chaos, even though it's the only thing that will stop them? Guess you're gonna get a one-way trick into the into a giant star. Woo! Quickly, so, quickly, someone find me the nearest star. You know. But, but yeah, that's, I that wish to punt this little shit into the nearest star system. There is I'm no star out. system, sir. Well, find me one so I can do it. <laughs> Fine. I mean, if they don't driving. have a convenient star, they can always just throw you into the ship's reactor core. Close enough. Yeah. Sometimes they carry it out to the planet and do it, <laughs> do it there as well. I, I've seen the Incinerator 5000. I know what I know that exists. I believe there's one notable example where they opened the bay doors and literally punted the radical out into what was a lack of atmosphere, knowing he would survive with his suit, but that he wouldn't survive re-entry. Yeah. So, more or less, that's the Inquisition. They do a lot of jobs policing and make sure shit doesn't get worse, <laughs> but... Given the fact that everyone has the power to the planet, eh, things get a little. 
complicated. You know, you're wishing that they go away. But they, yeah, but there are also guys who go in, find, oh, hey, this plant has a gene steal station. Oh, no. And come back and tell everybody, we need to deal with something about this right now. Sure. Are you still there? To, to put a cap on it, the Inquisition, is, the Inquisition is not great. They're not as terrible, but uh, a lot of things they say are terrible is a lot worse than, than even they know. They are dabbling in force sometimes. They don't know quite what they know what they're dealing with. But somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Look at the adorable anyway. Tanglia. <laughs> oh, it is adorable. Thank it is you. very adorable. Thank anyway, you. I have to step away for a bit, so and who wants to take on the Adeptus Mechanicus? The okay. third asshole. Awesome. Hello. Uh, before we begin before Adeptus we continue, Mechanicus, can we have a break, uh, please? Yeah, please. Yes, let's take a quick break, yeah. Thank perfect. you. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Also, hello, Wolf the Skeleton. Let me just shout you out a second before I go and go to the bathroom. Hi. So we taking a quick 15? Yeah. Yeah, Wolf, Wolf, we're talking about Warhammer. Therefore, Warhammer is talked about as I art so I can pay attention. It's okay. It's okay. We're, we're following the law, and if all else fails, we'll just switch over just in case. Should I just switch over just in case? Eh, we're fine. Okay. Anyway, bathroom. Everyone. Smoke them if you got them. Yep. Be back soon, everybody. Oh, yeah, I have a be right back screen, don't I? Yes, I do. Ha! Hwa! Uh. <laughs> they don't know is I am always here. Yep, I'm here oh, too. Shit, you're here too. God, oh no! Ah! Hi. I Hi. will return. Right I have to go let the dogs out there whining yeah. and being a Yeah. <laughs> no. Welcome, Core. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> No. I, I too am stuck here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just over here vibrating in Xenos. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, um, no. T tonight was, it uh, was, or, or tonight, tonight is gonna be fun because, um, currently, due to, Fun shenanigans. I'm working on like an hour of sleep right now, so if I seem like, oh my god, out of sort, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did not get much sleep last night, so I, the, I am surprised at the power of existence I'm going at right now. <laughs> I, I just kind of am going and continuing to go, <laughs> and when do I stop going? Probably sometime after my session. Just like. Like, that, that is... See me rolling, rolling, rope. Yeah, yeah, I am, I am pretty much attempting to limp biscuit my way to the finish line of today. <laughs> that is, uh. that, that is what today is going to be. Um, which is why I'm very happy that if I do, it, it, like, ha it have to, like, do any stuff here that it is, like, very simple, very just to the point of, okay, there's this, 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 and this, you know? <laughs> Right. Yeah. You, you know, um. Because again, I'm also the most casual knowledge person here. You know, like I, I, I am like going into this. I have enough information to tell Cat roughly about these things. Like, but I do not have much more information than her. A lot. I have never played a Warhammer game. A lot of my information is first and second hand from bits I've read on, bits I've heard of. You know. Yeah, I. That's about right. I also have like a bit of surface level knowledge, but more along the lines of a casual like Warhammer fan. I've read quite a few Caiaphas Cain books. I I uh, listened to a lot of a lot of audio logs. Logs. I watched all of TTS multiple times. Fair, 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 fair. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that that's basically that. Um, I, no, I I am just I'm here for the show. Basically, my I am I I am here to say the very few things I do know, and besides that, I am mostly just here to uh, to help retention. You know, right? So, I I am I am mostly uh, like uh, like we made the simple. I make it simpler. Boom. That condenses, you know. So you're Tyler from uh, Go My Favorite Sports. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure. 
just like <laughs> front line goes forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Front line meets other other line. Yeah, front lines just smack into each other. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I I am pretty much here to play commentator. That is kind of my goal. Uh. But yeah. We haven't even gotten to the freaking Xenos yet, and I'm terrified. Because no. of all the detail here, I'm just like, I have so little when it comes to the actual... There, there's a lot of different aliens. It's it's difficult. going to be very difficult to cover everything. I think broad strokes are probably better there, but I didn't... I... I... Hello. Yeah, yeah and, uh... All I... I'm going to say is, mine is going to be a lot <laughs> more theater of the mindy. That's yeah, fair. Yeah. Once, once I'm done with Mechanicum, I am unfortunately going to have to dip. I know I was, re I was late, but this will also make me late for character gen I'm supposed to be doing soon. Hi, I'm back. Hey, Hello. No so, Hi. I also just now noticed desktop audio doesn't get muted when I'm on the Be Right Back screen. Oops. Bugger. So they've been hearing you talk. Hopefully the music oh, no. has drowned you all out. Yeah, that's why I've just been talking in general because I didn't know if we were like muted or not. So I just... Don't worry, we we didn't say anything like truly heinous. You didn't? Yeah, we yeah. didn't say any gamer words. I was gonna yeah. say you didn't say anything that was like heinous gamer words. Fucking gamer words. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's a stupid thing, oh. and we're back anyway. We're only like we're not back back, but I'm just like getting it off so everyone has like visual aids. Are you gamers? By by the way, Alan. I mm -hmm. meant to tell you this the next time I spoke to you. Lip hog airs has become a term that my friend group uses now. I entirely blame you for this. <laughs> Why? What did I do? Okay, so remember when we talked? Uh, do you not remember how we talked about how the French got really pissy that uh, basically the French youth were using basically um, saying poggers and meme words, right? Yes, lip hog airs. Yes. So yeah, I told told uh, Dapper that. And explain to Dapper going, oh yeah, the French are, you know, making fun of the French as I always do as a part English person. Um, of and course. basically went, oh yeah, they have a word, they don't use poggers there, we're supposed to use the word le pogger. Yeah. And ever since teaching Dapper how to pronounce it. Oh yeah, no, no, it spread into my friend group. I, when I say I blame you, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm here for it. it oh, it, I'm, I'm fully it, happy to yeah. accept blame. That, yeah. yeah, it's fun and stupid, but yeah, mm -hmm. no. I, I just wanted to let you know about that before we get back into our fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'll be playing with a buddy of mine. It's, it's like he blows me up on accident. That's not a very lip hog airs thing of you to do. <laughs> this is my friend group, people. These are people who yeah. decided to become friends with me. Yeah, yeah. Look, if we were normal, we'd be boring. We oh, would exactly. be streamers. We would be having, like, I, I don't know, what, what do normal people do for jobs? Boring what do stuff. do for jobs? Yes. Oh wait, they have jobs? What, you think people work for fucking fun? How dare you? For whatever people do on the office. Uh, that, that, bankers. That. Ooh, bankers. Are they a paper company? Mm-hmm. They're a bank- Yeah, they're a paper company. Yeah. I don't watch the app- <clears throat> Hold on, I should not talk when I have a cracker in my mouth. No. It's very rude on some planets. I fuck you up. Um, so when, um, I did watch The Office, but there's a certain part of The Office I will immediately stop watching and refuse to go further on. Um, I refuse to watch any further as soon as they start putting Will Ferrell into the show, because this is where, I, that's how I discovered, yeah, Will Ferrell is not my type of comedy. Understandable. Uh, Fair. But I do watch it, but I'm like, I get why some people enjoy The Office, but, like, The Office isn't really heavily my thing, I say, as I watch Great British Break Off and yelling at the English. What the fuck is with you, England? Hmm. You fucked up s'mores! Uh... No, 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 no. Okay. I'm gonna talk about this. I'm ranting now. So, they did the Halloween week, which I'm like, oh, that's cute. For their technical challenge, they had to do s'mores, which means they also had to make graham crackers, which is a type of cookie. I'm not explaining that right now. Um... As well as make home make their own marshmallows and also chocolate sauce, which I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. And they show these beautiful little pristine, perfect little s'mores. And Paula, and I'm like, that's not a s'more. That's way too much marshmallow. <sighs> I'm gonna go find a fucking picture because I'm so mad at it. Like they're so 
poor, they're like, these perfect little, yeah, everyone is doing articles going, Paul Hollywood has re ruined s'mores on the Great British Bake Off. Yes, he has! Um, see? As a British person, I can say we genuinely don't That's care. not a s'more! That's not a that, s'more! That's not a s'more, that's a fucking cake, my dude. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that thing. The marshmallow to chocolate to graham cracker ratio is completely off! What the fuck is that? It's supposed to be the s'more. Even I know a s'more should be relatively thin. It shouldn't be, like, you know, ah. fatter than it is wide. Yeah, and he's like, and it's not supposed to be oozing and gooing on the side. I'm like, Paul Hollywood! What are we talking about? Paul? Zilla joined into the best time! Hi, Zilla, yeah. welcome to Cat's Ranting about the Great We're marveling at a baker having fucked up a s'more. Paul Hollywood, Mr. Oh. Simon Cowell of the Cook Baking World, I have dubbed him this, Basically, uh, if you look on my screen, Gorgia, that's what he thinks a s'more is. That was the technical challenge for Halloween week, and that is a s'more. I'm, I'm sorry, but like, no, I did catch when you got back, Zilla, and I understood you joined in with the least and best context to what we mm. were talking about. No, but it was just like, yeah. we had to talk about something during break time, and I was just like, hello, chat, we're going to talk about Bake Off. Um, so, yeah. and, it, and I love it, he's like, it's supposed to look like this, I'm like, okay, first of all, the marshmallow to chocolate to graham cracker ratio, completely off. Completely off. Two, I'm not supposed to dislocate my jaw like an anaconda to eat a s'more. Nobody should have to dislocate their jaw to eat a thing. <laughs> and my personal favorite, he goes, and he says the phrase, it's not supposed to be oozing on the side. It's not supposed to ooze out when you eat it. Tell me you've never if had a you, s'more, and without telling me, you've never had a s'more. If you, uh, if you get covered in goop, you're doing s'mores right. Exactly! I, I don't do s'mores. I'm not a, I'm not a marshmallow person. I don't like them. I understand, but you can, uh, like, I remember some- Oh no, I definitely had the biscuits with the chocolate between them and, like, heated that shit up. That was great. Oh, that is good. No. The gooey is important. Yeah, for yeah. a full- But here's the weird thing. I remember someone did as a response. Whoever saw the movie The Sandlot? Who remembers the movie The Sandlot? This is a very American 90s I, thing. I, just, I do. Yeah. I remember. Okay. I've seen bits and pieces. There's a scene where basically one of the kids explains what the fuck a s'more is. <laughs> and does it in like Fair the enough. simplest term ever. And I remember people basically getting that clip from that movie being like, Hey, Paul, this is a s'more. <laughs> So, like, when Marshall describes a burger yeah. from How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, okay. It's just, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, like, I, I I, need someone to take me to England, okay? Pick me up. It's like that scene from Red Dwarf where the robot blows up. It's yeah. just not right. It's just not right. Yeah. I'm just like, pick me up. Take me Catch to England. Catch lobster. I need you to leave me alone with Paul Hollywood for five minutes so I can t explain to him what a s'more is. Well, football bats may, may or may not be involved in the uh, in the demonstration. Because, <laughs> like... You really can hold your own. Thank you, Gladio, for existing. Because, like, it doesn't... It's like... I'm sorry! I didn't know! I kept making jokes saying you guys gentrified the s'more, and then someone corrected me going, No, they colonized it. Ah! <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wish they were wrong. <laughs> yeah, because it's just like, because this is like, I have, I've never even seen on weird Pinterest forms weird renditions of a s'more. I just, I just, I hurt. I hurt in so many ways because s'mores are a part of my childhood. So I'm like, I'm offended again. I'm like, British guy has offended me two, four, four times this season and I don't know how I feel about it. Okay. Could I distract you from your if it's a bakery inspired hurt then? Is it Objectus Mechanicus? It would it will be, yes. If you tell me that one of the Objectus Mechanicus basically stabbed Paul Hollywood and that's the reason why he thinks this is what a s'more looks like. They, they might, they I might seriously <laughs> doubt it, but considering the way he sometimes treats his equipment, they might have harsh words for him. <laughs> please, 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 please. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about All happier right. things. Let's talk about which, people which who... Part, which part is he captured by? The the irregular Adeptus or the Dark Mechanicum? We which don't one? talk about them. 
I was about to say, which one does he deserve, though? We don't talk about the heretics. Okay. And we're also keeping things brief, guys. Keep it Let's simple. Okay. Don't hurt my brain any further than it already was. The Inquisition already hurt me. Stop hurting okay. me, Inquisition, please. To understand me. why the Mechanicum do some of what they do, we do need to go back a little bit before the Mechanicum were a thing to the lessons that birthed them. So, the 15th to the 25th millennium, the golden age of technology, before the heresy, before the emperor had even taken over Earth, all of that jazz, the first human empire. Accounts of this era are frustratingly incomplete, and obviously some of the records that do exist are unreliable as all hell. It's generally accepted... Gotcha. It's generally accepted as a time of development and expansion of humankind across the galaxy. The warp drive, navigators, and the standard template construct, we'll come back to that in a minute, are the tools of this era of technology and expansionism. Many worlds settled during the age would later be known as the night worlds, which I'm sure some of these guys have already mentioned before. Human psychers would appear in increasing number on these worlds later on, but not yet. Most of this massive expansion was only possible because of the STCs, the Standard Template Construct, which was basically a repository containing near enough the entirety of the uh, the entirety of human technical knowledge, from shovels to tanks to battleships to warp drives, every blueprint conceivable that humanity might need when settling a world and its expansion on said world was included in one of these STCs. Question. Yes. Did it include the blueprints on a fucking properly make a s'more? It Lied did. <laughs> it did. Okay. Everything conceivably makeable by machine would have its blueprints and the manufacturing uh, specifications would be included in this thing. So not a s'more. From, well, <laughs> s the, the thing that could make s'mores in a perfect, fa a perfect and efficient fashion, yes. Okay. <laughs> no, says I will not let this I'm go. talking about the entire the entire sphere of human technical knowledge, all of it, from how to make a proper, uh, proper, well-fitting screw, to the screwdriver you would use to put it in, to all the manufacturing equipment that could be used to make those two things, all of it. Damn. That's it, it's a tremendous amount of data, and they were dropping these on every single world they colonized and inhabited. These things were everywhere. So. Uh, da -da -da -da. So, very few of these things survived the Age of Strife, which took a little, which happened later, even partially. The very rumor of the wreck of one, Omnisaya be praised, or a hard copy printout from one, Omnisaya can spark praised. an expenditure of ships and manpower that can see planets invaded and hundreds of thousands of lives sacrificed and expended to obtain. That's. Mm -hmm the level of technical know-how we are talking about here, that the modern-day Imperium will literally have a world burnt to ashes to acquire it. Just for some technology information. Technology that we no longer have, nor the ability to recreate. Oh! So, you have to remember, these were made before the fall, before the heresy, all of that jazz. This is the golden age before mankind's second empire. So, during this time, uh, fighting, the fighting and work of nearly every industry, of every need or want mankind had, was done by the men of iron, or just the iron men. Artificial constructs with fully fledged artificial intelligences that served as the army and labor force for the governments that existed before the Imperium of Man. Around the 23rd millennium, the singularity occurred. What's the singularity? The, a the singularity is a common term used in science fiction to talk about when an AI suddenly decides, oh shit, humanity is a bigger threat to me than anything else, and I should deal with them. The dawning of true intelligence and the idea that if a soul makes a thing intelligent, the gaining of a digital one. Oh, okay, I understand that. I understand the concept now. Yeah, it just took me a bit. Okay. okay. I thought so, singularity meant something different than what I assumed, but it's the same thing. Gotcha. In this context, that's what it means. Normally, a singularity is just a single point in which the gravitational forces are so 
absolutely disgustingly large that the universe can be contained in its entirety inside of it. That sounds nice. But we're talking about we're talking about a software singularity, the rise of the machines, essentially. Skynet. Yes. Worse. Worse than Skynet. Jeff Bezos yeah. Skynet. Worse. What's worse than Jeff Bezos Skynet? Bezos is only human. So, the singularity occurs, and it's not just the men of iron, it is all their weapons of war, from self-replicating nanoswarms eating everything on a planet, to robotic snakes, the length of which could be, uh, become the circumference of Saturn's rings, able to snuff out stars and most devastatingly those nanobots we were talking about able to strip the surface of a planet in hours to build its war machine the revolt shattered the prosperity and the unity of the galactic community as it stood and laid the foundation for the age of strife da, da, da. the 25th to the 30th millennium is widely accepted as the age of strife mankind as a monolithic power collapsed at an astonishing rate. Records, like everything else during that time, are conflicting and making it difficult to discern the absolute truth of what happened during this age. Tales of anarchy, demonic presences, and possession are commonplace in this era. Anarchy. Large areas of the galaxy are cut off from one another by warp storms of such tremendous scale they have never been seen since. That Worlds that nice. are—it's <laughs> super fun for an empire when all of its roads suddenly stop working. Yes. Yeah, it sounds fun. It sounds great. It sounds like Disney World up in here. Worlds that are not destroyed are cut off from the galactic community at large and are forced to fend for themselves as best they can. During this time, the Night Worlds, those ones initially founded, fare best as they are persecuting their psychers and reject high technology, having learned lessons from the cybernetic revolt. The human worlds burn around them on all sides and internally are beset by demons and warp storms. Mars overcomes these internal strifes and is united under the cult Mechanicus. During the low tides of warp storms, the cult sends out its fleets raiding and seeking for technology, while simultaneously founding new colonies made in the image of Mars, forge worlds, places of learning and technology, to try and rebuild and recoup what was lost. However, these outfound uh, fleets and foundings were limited in scope and occupy the space that would later become the Segmentum Solar. That sounds the nice. Emperor the Emperor of Mankind completes his conquest of Terra, which is a whole other story. He has united the tribes under his banner, and he looks to the stars to continue his crusade, and his eyes fall upon the planet of Mars and its forges. He needs those forges, their, te their technical acumen, and their ability to create material that he would need for his next war. He lands upon the surface of Mars, and his power, his psychic aura, is so great that the Mechanicum who meet him immediately declare him the physical manifestation of their machine god, the Omnissiah. I know that word. The Omnissiah is the machine god. The machine god is connected to all things mechanical and technological, and is the sole font from which the machine spirits are derived. Each and every machine spirit of every sufficiently complex machine is a tiny sliver of the Omnissiah itself, and thus the machines are blessed in his appearance and are directly connected to their god. To commune with the machine, large, small, complex and simple, is to commune directly with their god. And the physical manifestation of their god came to Mars, and so he did not need to conquer them. Mars is, uh, is as far as I'm aware, the only world in the Imperium that is not subject to the Emperor's rule. They are an allied nation which is a big difference so far till something happens 
in the new version. Until something happens. <laughs> Until some new version of Warhammer 40k comes out and it's like, oh, they didn't like each other anymore. One of them told them the other one looked fat in that dress and now they're enemies. I don't know why, but that's just where I went with that joke. Anyway. The Treaty of Mars is signed, and the Mechanicum agree to forge the weapons and material and armor required for the Emperor's Space Marine Legions, the newly forged Warriors of the Empire. Yay. The Night World Crisis is... The Night World Called Crisis, not the Night World Crisis, sorry. A world called Crisis, which happened to be a Night World, is rediscovered, and it is brought back into the Imperium, the first conquest of many to come. The Mechanicum uses its power and influence to gain exclusive trading rights with the Night Worlds and establishes new forges near the most mineral-rich planets, the entire population of which are put to work in the many forges and mines to produce the war gear that would be needed for the reunification of humanity and its planets. The 31st to the 30th to the 31st millennium, the rise of the Empire. Da, 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 da. The crusade begins properly. The Emperor leads his legions and his fleets out from the Segmentum Solar with the single goal of reuniting the hundreds of thousands of lost planets of mankind. The spearhead of the Crusades are made up of the Space Marine Legions, backed up by an ever-growing Imperial Army, all equipped by the Forges of Mars. Alongside these Crusaders of the Empire are the Allied Legions of Scitari, the Cy Legio Cybernetica, and the Legio Titanicus. I think I've heard some of these names before, but I don't know where, and I feel like I'm about to have a moment. We are going to very briefly cover these, yes. Uh... I'm not sure we need to, honestly. I, it's it's very, very basic what each of them are. The Skatari are warriors born, bred, and manufactured. They are the military arm of the Mechanicum. They're basically the Imperial Guard, only they have all of the cybernetics and wet wear in their brain to make them better soldiers. Okay, just they guard just... pretty much all the Mechanicum shiz. Yep. Okay, just stick to a couple of sentences, we'll be good. Okay. The Legio Cybernetica is responsible for the production, maintenance, and deployment of autonomous war machines. Robots with big-ass guns. They're not powered by AI. AI are not a thing. They're more like... Well, fully-fledged AI are not a thing. They're more like the AI teammates you might have in a video game. You that. give them all to go and take care of it, and then they come back. And it's a crapshoot if they work. I mean, the Mechanicum also have a Tech Marine on hand to wrangle them, as it were. And then the mightiest arm of the Mechanicum, the Legio Cybernetica, is responsible for the production, maintenance, and deployment of the... Uh, sorry, the Collegia Titanica is responsible for the Titans. Building size monstrosities of metal ranging from 15 to 150 meters in height, equipped with weapons capable of shattering mountains, and controlled by networks that ingest and pass combat telemetry from all nearby forces, from the lowest Skitari to the ships in orbit. So powerful are the computers and uh, uh, combat machinery inside these ginormous machines, they are probably the closest representation of a machine spirit to the machine god that we currently have, and thus they are referred to as the god machines. Question, question. Answer. Can they play Doom? They absolutely can, and they do so wherever they walk. Also, according to says, I'm getting Pacific Rim vibes here. No, Very much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good to know. Sorry if we're doing silly little jokes. We have to intervene no, okay. sometimes. No, these machines, these machines, these machines are very difficult to work with. They have crews of men and women, but they are <coughs> beyond the normal baseline humans. It is so rare that a human being is capable of interfacing with one of these god machines that their bloodlines are protected by the Mechanicum itself. Why do I feel they like are incest is happening here? You too, no, no, they're very carefully managed to avoid that because they don't want weird <coughs> genetic nonsense happening. They need these people to be able to commune with the god machines. The Titan... You, the Mechanicum do not pick pilots. Right. 
the pilots are gifted unto the god machine and the god machine either burns them out in the seat and rejects them or makes them its puppet that sounds horrifying i'm just gonna say i was hoping it was like a cool little like dragon rider dragon moment or like you know like in uh, dynatopia where the i where, where the no nope. no it's not it's not there, like dynatopia no. it's not like dynatopia no. where a cool bonding no oh, okay no no this is Warhammer. Things are very rarely Dynatopia. You have, have These you god Dynatopia? machines require that their pilots have <coughs> a singular will. Unflinching. Uncorruptible. They are the partners of the god machines, and they are held in higher esteems than many, than many Magos. If the pilot of a god machine says a thing will be thus, it takes a lot of juice to be able to turn around and say, no, chief, we can't do that. Okay. There's no nice things. Okay. Should I just accept that there is never anything There happening? is almost nothing nice happening in the Imperium, no. No, oh, okay. Nope. Okay. So, I the... Get out of the Imperium, honestly. Can we leave during the hor <laughs> Yeah. So, the Horus Heresy takes place. The Mechanicum, like much of the Imperium, is riddled with corruption like the rest of the Empire due to the Civil War. The Fabricator General of Mars, the literal head honcho of Mars. The Fabricator General is the right hand of the Omnissiah. When did we go to Mars? I might have accidentally zoned out during that one. Mars is the homeworld of the Mechanicum. Okay, thank you. Wait, when do they get the Fabricator General of Mars allies himself with the traitors and with Horus, oh. and causes the schism of Mars. The conflict sees Skitari legions both complete and partially made, warring with each other across the surface of Mars, while the legion Titanicum, uh, Titanicus tears itself apart, walking across the surface and stepping on those very same Skitari. The, uh, Mars is rent nearly asunder with unrelenting warfare. The Mechanicus, who gave allegiance to Horus and his Dark Gods, are renamed the Dark Mechanicum. They are hated and feared as they begin to fuse demons into their machines, forever corrupting the spirits of the machines inside. So kind of like those, uh, w those one creatures in Doom. Yes, exactly like that. Okay, see? References. Yeah. Rupert Gwilliman, leader of the 13th Legion, forces the traitors back world by world until they're forced to hide in the Eye of Terror, a rift in space leading directly into the warp. He gives a secret task to Archmagus Dominus Bellius Cool that will reshape the Space Marines for the next few centuries. The task would take him nearly ten millennia to bear fruit, and would see the Magos nearly assassinated by a demon Primarch. That's how important this shit was. From the 31st to the 32nd millennium, the rebirth of the cult. The Mechanicum is reorganized as the Adeptus Mechanicus. The new Fabricator General is given a permanent position as the High Lord of Terror, and its allied status is lost. The entirety of the Mechanicum and its sphere of influence is now subject to the will of the Imperium and the Emperor. The Emperor is entombed within the Golden Throne. The device is so complex that only the Adeptus Mechanicus can service its systems and maintain its critical functions. The throne maintains the life of the Emperor and enhances his psychic powers, allowing him to forever guide the Empire ships of the psychic beacon that is the Astronomicon. With the Horus Heresy having come to a close and the sons of the Emperor either missing, incapacitated, dead, or turned traitor, the High Lords of Terror take full control of the Imperium. From the 33rd to the 40th millennium, Redemption. The Mechanicum focuses its energies less on its own crusades and expansion, and more upon the production of increasing amounts of war material for the once again ever-expanding crusades and wars of the Imperial War Machine. As more chapters of Space Marines and the Imperial Guard are drawn into near-continuous conflicts and a war of attrition to defend the Imperium. The 41st Millennium. Current Times. 
With the forces of the Imperium stretched thinner every year, the Empire becomes unable to prevent invasion. Various Xeno species, as well as the forces of Chaos, increase the frequency of their attacks to an alarming rate across all of human space, external, border, and interior. The Avenging Sun, Rupert Gwilliman, awakens during this period of time, and while Xenos are rumored to be involved, the Mechanicum claims sole responsibility for the good fortune. Warp storms, the like of which have not been seen since the Age of Strife, cut off Forge Worlds from their fleets and from each other. With support cut off and no hope of reinforcements, Xenos and Chaos alike take the opportunity to invade any Forge World within reach, knowing that without these Forge Worlds, the Imperium would have no ammunition or tanks or armor to wage its many wars. Seven Forge Worlds are destroyed outright, and several more simply vanish into the warp. Rupert Gwilliman augurs Archmagus Dominus Bellius Cool to open the vaults on Mars in which he has stored the products of that secret, pri secret Primaris project entrusted to him by the Primarch in the 31st millennium. The Ultima founding and its Primaris space marines are born. And that brings us up to current times. Uh, I know, it's a lot, I'm sorry. I know. No. So, permission to shotgun the rest. Please! By all means. Shotguns! Okay, so, all that was the Imperium. Chaos, quick summary. Thank you. Traitors, demons. Demons typically divided into four categories. Demons of corn, they like to murder, stab, like blood. Demons of slash, horny, crab claws, go really fast. Demons of zinch. They're big nerds, they like magic, they are potentially the source of all magic, they also like really confusing plots, aka the most confusing card games ever known to mankind. Then there is Nurgle, they play magic? aka... Yes! <laughs> actually, it's a joke in one of the abridged series that they play Yu-Gi-Oh! That actually makes more sense. Um... But, then there is uh, Demons of Nurgle, they are rot, they are stagnation, they are chubby, and they're also the happiest of all the demons. Oh good, there's happy demons in this universe of nothing but grim dark and sadness. Except they're happy because they're rotting. They're contradictions. It's hilarious. They're also Nurgle's potentially the only nature god in the entire setting of 40k. Is there even nature? Yeah, in, pretty much. Is there nature even in 40k? The way it's sounding, oh, there's yeah. a severe yeah. lack of it. Oh no, um, it exists. It come from the most terrifying jungle imaginable in the universe. Uh-huh. And that is chaos in a nutshell, because there are space marine chapters dedicated to the gods, the gods united, this dark mechanicum. You know those titans that were mentioned? Uh -huh. Put spikes and skulls in them, and, and bam, you have chaos titans. They exist. They're terrifying. Um, I like and there's put a demon in the pilot seat because it took over. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of little details, but that's the big swing of things. Going into Xenos, we All have right. the Eldar, which are space elves. They're immortal, well, pretty close to immortal. They used to reproduce like crazy, but then they reproduce so hard that they accidentally birthed Slanesh. How do you um, reproduce so hard that you burn? Actually, hold on, that might be b b touching Twitch TOS. Let's not type that one. <laughs> they had big unga bunga party. Yeah, um, they tried you... to find all the different pleasures in the world and then realized, uh oh. Yeah. You no, you so, ungood too hard and bungood a god. I was gonna say, is it, is it kind of like the uh, oh, what are they in Hell in, in Hellraiser, the Cenobites? Cenobites? Um, <laughs> that's half that's the Eldar. Drukhar. Those are known as the Drukari, the half Eldar. They not the half, the dark Eldar. My bad. I'm shotgunning here, so it's all vomiting out of my mouth here. So they like to try and stave off Slanesh through torture and agony. If that works or not, ask them, and then they'll shank you for it. Um, shank to go into the list you. of their depravity would probably get us banned from Twitch, so I ain't gonna. Just know that they typically sound like pirates. Avasi parties. Okay. Further on, there are the uh, the uh, the the I'm forgetting the term for them, but they're basically the Eldar who decided, no, we're not gonna do that. We're instead gonna become cold and emotionless, and we're gonna shove the souls of our dead people so that we don't go to a chaos god who's gonna eat them. We're going to put their souls into this magical uh, um, machine and basically make soul uh, community mechs. They're made out of wraith bone, which is the material I was trying to think of. 
And that is the extent of my knowledge on the Eldar, basically mystery space elves who hate anything that's lower than them, which is most. And while desperately needing everyone's help, refuse to explain anything ever. They sound lovely and wonderful, and I hope they have a good time. I'm saying this sarcastically. Also, the Harlequins that you like, the Death Jesters? Yes, yes, yes! Sub-faction of these guys. Fuck! They follow the Laughing God, who protects the biggest source of knowledge that is also one of the most <coughs> forbidden places, known as the Black Library, which is hilariously the name that Games Workshop gives the collection of their novels. Really? Um, yep. 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 They call it the Black Library. Those are the people... The repository of all knowledge and such, yeah. They're the people who were like assholes about content creators, right? Yes. yes. Yep, yep, yep. They're the people who own and made this entire franchise. Can so. I find one of them and ask them how's their therapy going? Because I'm really curious how their therapy is going. I wouldn't recommend it. Gotcha. Yeah, um, all right. I got serious. a bounce, unfortunately. Okay. So, uh, going on to another member I... of what I would consider the... Uh, wait, what? Uh, no, oh, uh, Tim had to go. Alan had to go. He had a, he had a previous thingy, Mabobber. Da, da 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 It's okay. I was already aware of it. Don't worry about it. All right, I was just shotgunning. Also, uh, before I continue shotgunning, was there anyone else who who hasn't spoken yet? Technically, Core has I, said nothing except for adorable little commentaries, and so has uh, I Dapper. Apologize. I just kind of stole everything from you. I'm sorry. Um, hey, it's okay. It's okay. You sure? Core. Uh, yeah. Core just wants but, to work, doesn't he? I mean, I can go on with the rest of the Xenos if you want. Yes, that would be great. Just save me my bugs, please. All right, I'll, I'll step. I'll just glance over the Tyranids then. All right. They exist. <laughs> so, be, before the Imperium of Man, before the before those monkeys took their first steps as sentient creatures, there was the war in heaven. The the destructive fire that waged through the stars between the Old Ones and their soldiers that would go on to form the Eldar and the Orcs and the Necron Tear, the undead metallic monstrosities that that tried their best to wipe life out of the galaxy. Why? Because they just hated it. That's a they were kind of cancer-ridden on their planet and uh, kind of felt like the entire universe abandoned them, so they decided... If we're going to be miserable, let's make everyone miserable. So what, if I'm not happy, no one's happy? Oh my god, they're Karens. Absolutely. Why? What? what, what, what <laughs> was that funny? Okay. I mean, it's about the same thing. Okay. <laughs> now, the Necrons... What would become the Necrons went into hiding in their tomb worlds. Cast, us, cast away by the combined efforts of the Eldar and the Orc. Who would then go on to be far greater threats of their own accord as the old ones seem to die away into history. And that's when the orcs got to be what they want to be. The beast and the orciest! <laughs> they go around pillaging and burning all they want because if they can't be stopped, then the other gets are too weak to be alive. They believe as best as they can and wish things into existence. Paint something red, it goes faster. Paint something purple, you can't see it for shit. All which empowered by their own warpish energy. The war! Which is coincidentally what you call a big bunch of us gits when we go storming our way across the galaxies and kicking over them space marine gits. <laughs> and if you kill us one of us, well, we just puff off and make more. Oh, so I was exploding into little spools that would go off and make more orcs, more s Well, what do we call them? What do we call them, little things? They're snotlings. They're squids. And we use them to, to empower us as we go and make more war around the galaxy. And then, as all that tumultuousness goes about, the Necrons awaken. Their tomb worlds finally birthing forth their metallic their metallic might across the stars. What once would be a simple aggro world would soon become nothing more than a slaughterhouse as their machines would wage war, slicing any 
who dare live within their presence. Emotionless machines with just us hatred for life born from millennia of sleep. Except some retain themselves, keeping forth their own emotions, their own dreams, and thus forming the dynasties of the Necrons that would quickly become even greater. Uh -oh. And if you wish to uh, take the Tyranids away there, Zilla, you have the floor. So, to, the best way I've found to explain the Tyranids is through the process and how they fuck up a planet. Oh no. So, it starts off with one human-sized, four-armed, bald-headed bug monster that kind of looks like the hybrid child of Pumpkinhead and a xenomorph. I don't want to see that. Imagine that. They have art. Um, so one of those gets onto a ship or finds its way to a planet in some other way. It sneaks into the, into the uh, darkest sewers and finds someone to stab in the back of the neck with its little pincher on its tongue. This changes the mind state of the person and also uh, infects them with the DNA of this creature, which is known as a gene stealer, effectively starting a gene stealer cult. The more people that that infected person brings in and the more people that this gene stealer, slowly turning into a patriarch, uh, commands and mutates, the more the cult grows and the stronger their psychic might which, unlike most other factions, is separate from the warp, grows. So, As... like the Borg plus Xenomorph plus those weird creatures, and I think, what is that movie? What is that movie? Starship Troopers. Uh, have you heard yeah. of the Zergs? Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Zerg. Um, the Zergs were inspired by the Tyranids, but I'm getting to those. Okay. We're still... So, uh, as they breed... Yeah, and yes, breed. Yeah. Um, every generation, uh, they get less and less buggy. Until the fourth generation, where for some reason, they went from making humans who just were uh, naturally bald, to suddenly they're making full-blooded gene stealers like the first one that got on the planet. During this time, they've been embedding themselves in the workforce and getting people into higher positions of power. They're effectively doing the lizard people conspiracy theory bug edition. Uh-huh. They live. Then, once the cult has grown strong enough, the patriarch sends a psychic signal into the void. And something picks it up. Then, they start a rebellion. Is it a nice rebellion? No? No. Uh, no. Um, basically, the entire planet turns on itself because it's everyone's it's all the governments led by different people who are all under the control of the diff of the cult, all basically starting a planet's wide war. Then, the psychers who aren't part of the cult on the planet start to go mad as their connection to the warp is disconnected. That's not good. Then spores come down from the sky, and all plant life turns on the locals. <laughs> And that's when shit gets weird, because that's when the Hive Fleet shows up. Massive, continent-sized ships that are living creatures start shooting even more living creatures down to the planet below. <laughs> These are the Tyranids, the gods that the cult worships, come to devour the world. Their promise from the Patriarch is that they would be spared and live in the new world made by these creatures. Nice. Little, little did they know, the Tyranids are coming there to eat everything except for the lamest of rocks. They will devour the core. They will devour important metals. They will devour all plant life, all animal life, the buildings. They will eat your doormat. They don't fucking care. They're here to consume. So they're locusts. Like, really, yes. really, 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 really bad locusts, but locusts. Or teenagers. And, yes. And once they have uh, defeated the planetary force and the cult is embracing them, that is when the patriarch reverts from being the source of their psychic power to disconnecting the cult 
and rejoining the hive mind. And that's when the cult realizes they were scammed. And then they're eaten too. We were the baddies. And then it starts over again, going from planet to planet. No one knows where they come from. No one knows what their purpose is. But they fuck with warp stuff. They eat everything. There's even a sub-faction that is, sub that is completely anti-demon, which demons don't give them any biomass. So there's no logic to that. But they are a numerous threat that is beyond the Milky Way. Some believe that the Milky Way is the last thing for them to destroy, and it's only a, uh, it's only a matter of time. I have a question. I have an answer. Um, does information ever go out about these things? Like, like let's just say somehow there is a survivor or something, and like spread out. Is there? There, there there's no survivors. I'm, I'm ha now realizing. But like information to be passed on about the Tyranids, like hey, oh, yeah. keep an um, eye out on this thing. <laughs> so the Gene Stealer cults were around long before the Tyranids even entered the system. Um, so people thought they were chaos entities at first, um, but there's actually been in there was an Inquisitor named Kripman who went on a little uh, crusade where he was following these planets that were being deleted, and he discovered what the source was, tried to warn people. Eventually led to a battle of the Tyranids where they fought the Ultramarines, uh, Rebute Gilliman, his space marines, and they actually drove the Tyranids off their home planet somehow. Yay? Not yay? Uh, Question it's because so, they're blue. It's a good thing um, for, the, for the Empire and for most life, uh, but a lot of people are like, no, that, that really should not have happened. Some people stock uh, chalk it up to uh, the orcs belief in blue and the ultramarines are mostly colored blue so they were lucky um, other people chalk it up to games workshop giving them protagonist powers <laughs> I should um, laugh at that but I'm laughing thing. Person thing. <laughs> personally yep. I like to prefer the blue theory the blue theory makes yeah. the most sense but here's the other fun thing there are some uh, there are some named tyranids because it's hard to believe, because after every time they devour a planet, they don't just send their units back into the ship. They are re-devoured. Ew. And broken down into biomass. Ew. Um, but there are some that do retain things. The scariest one is the Swarm Lord, the ultimate leader, who was built as a primary combatant and general, who can focus the hive mind and... <laughs> learns from every single time he fights something. That's... And when he dies, he comes back remembering that shit. I don't like that. I don't like that. Now, outside of the Gene Stealer cult, which is malicious and manipulative, I typically like the Tyranids because they don't really... They're not sadistic, for the most part, besides Gene Stealer cult. They just want to go around and eat everything. They just want foods. Yeah, whereas everything else is like malicious, they'll torture you, they'll uh, make you live in squalor. Nah, Tyrna just want to eat. That, that, is, that is why I like them. They're not good guys. They, they, they're mostly just overly complicated animals do in the like, pursuit of their animalistic needs. Do they like belly robs? No one's there been stupid art, enough there is to... Art of, oh. There no. is art, there is art, but I would not believe it. Unless you're in the cult, and even then it's a matter of time before you're eaten. I just wanted to know because you said animalistic, and I'm like, oh, belly rubs. <laughs> what? Just imagine giving a giant insect creature a belly rub. It sounds awesome. <laughs> or horrifying. Yeah, until it takes your arm off. Yeah, Listen, I, was I, I may or may not need to request you doing art of a lictor receiving belly rubs. <laughs> oh god, why they are They're assassin bugs with Cthulhu faces. I'm already in. Tentacles. I can draw those. Look, I've drawn them already. <laughs> well, those aren't tentacles. These are technically vines. It's the, 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 anyway, focus! Artwork, not artwork. Well, I mean, you know. Oh, uh, I can continue shotgunning the Xenos unless there is uh, anyone else who wishes to pipe up. Well, I definitely want to speak about the Tau. 
yes, that is honestly besides the um, the squats coming back, which I'm reluctant to consider as Xenos. Uh, yeah, I think they're all that's left. So go ahead. Yeah. So essentially, the Tau are the newest empire in the galaxy. And they became that way over the course of a very, very short a technological renaissance. These beings known as ethereals coming down to grace them with this knowledge and quickly developing from merely throwing stones and sticks at each other to flying hyperdrive capital ships Are throughout several different expansions. Hmm? Are they hot? I mean, there's a certain little kitten that might think they're hot, but... Uh, I honestly think you'd like the croup more, but... I don't know, I'm just I'm, I'm just asking some stupid questions now for funsies. <laughs> well, you might think they're technologi they're, they're technologically hot, because essentially, these guys make the Adeptus Mechanicus look like children. Huh? Their technology gets so advanced with each and every expansion that soon enough it will, it even currently now, rivals the Imperium at its golden age. That if the Tau were to be in an armed conflict with the Empire, it wouldn't be a matter of if the Empire won, they could just, you know, hammer away at them with their giant amount of guardsmen. It's the fact that they would be so crippled from just fighting the small, newly formed empire, that other threats would become a way greater issue. And again, the Tau are still small. They only have a small portion of the galaxy to themselves. Far, far tinier in comparison to the might of the Imperium. But they have mechs. They have battle suits. They have towering robots that they pilot from the inside. Their weaponry is far more ranged based. Whenever a space marine comes charging at them with a chainsword, they jet propulse back and just keep firing at them with a with a laser gun. They use drones to spot their targets and fire at will. They have several different casts: earth, water, wind, fi fire, all all basically for different things. Fire is their main main army. Wind is their navy. Earth is their technologies, and water is is their probably most dangerous cast because they go out and just recruit people. Question. They talk to different planets. They talk about the greater good, their grand philosophy that all should fight under one banner. Question. Yes. Do they have heart, and also can they make Captain Planet? They cannot make Captain Planet because oh. I'm pretty sure a lot of people think that they lobotomize individuals so no heart there okay okay my one joke my one joke distinctly lacking heart no captain planet what about no the avatar planet. i mean there are a few you could probably say that about i think so, that's the ethereals honestly <laughs> I, probably yeah this is slowly the, turning into how many dumb questions can cat ask and annoy them because that's the other thing the tower unaffected by the war <coughs> they do not feel any effect from chaos. They're almost blinded to it. How? No one knows. The okay. ethereals give them these psychic powers, but they're not based in, in warp energy. They, The ethereals, by and large, are the only ones that have any psionic powers, comparative to the rest of their race. Ah. But along the way, they just gather up all these other different people. Humans even join their cause. Why? And because they fight for the greater good. Nobody knows why they 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 are able to convince so many, but they're able to, including their most notable companions, the uh, the Crutes, these plant-like creatures that can devour DNA and be able to enforce their own body with with that genetic material. And they're essentially the melee line for the Tau. They fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat way more efficiently than the Tau ever could. Almost a symbiotic relationship is formed between these two people. And that, in a nutshell, is the Tau. That's it? Um, I'm going to point out just one little thing about the Tau that I find just 
fucking fascinating. In a yeah, good way or a bad way? Um, in kind of a hilarious way. Uh -huh. So, uh, it was pointed out that the Tau really have no influence with the warp. Uh, their, their souls are based, they're so dim to the warp entities that they're typically not noticed by demons to the point where demons ignore them completely. Um, but the big thing is when humans join, the human philosophy fucks things up for them. Uh, one, uh, they, uh, besides the fact that humans are noticed by the warp, so then demons do sometimes notice their armies, their forces, their transportation, but the other big thing is they need to stop any humans who approach the greater good like a religion. Remember how I stated early on that uh, any belief can lead to a warp entity manifesting? Santa, yes. There is concern amongst the Tau that they might create a warp entity of the greater good. That sounds horrifying and I don't like it. I'm not even in this universe and I don't like it. Which is very ironic. <laughs> that tell That tells us that we're doing a good job here. Which is uh, what, what, that I don't want, oh yes, because I look at Warhammer and think, ooh, vacation home. <laughs> well, no, no, the, it's the sense that it's like, okay, the, that you are understanding the gravity of these things is what, is what is saying, okay, you're retaining this information. That you I don't want to. You understand why the greater good is a, a, is a bad thing if it's turned into a god, or if a god is made in its image. I also know that the concept of the term greater good for any kind of movie, or any form of media, usually equals something actually not that good, it's actually really, really bad! Ironically, they used to be the main good faction that Games Workshop created. Until they, they realized, for one, not a lot of people liked that and got very mad about it, because they thought the Imperium of Man was supposed to be the good people, and two, that kind of just made them bland. So, like, first edition clerics? Essentially, yes. And, no like, offense to any just, first edition clerics in the room. <laughs> and, again, just to underscore how powerful the Tau are at their just current moment, they were able to hold off a Tyranid Hive Fleet. They, they weren't able to win fully against them. They needed the Drukhari, and they fucked off with their citizenry after that. But they were able to hold their own against the ta or against the tyranids for for even a minute amount of time and that's i i forget was it a high fleet or was it a splinter fleet either one of course that, that that's an amazing feat in and of itself they even go up against the orcs on several different occasions orcs. and are able to beat them back i know i, I know some things yay orcs yes. <laughs> Ooh, this is a lot yeah, of stuff. And, and uh, there is a lot of lore, and it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It is. I don't know what I'm feeling. <laughs> um, my th this is where the kind of the, the subject that I was going to bring up at the end kind of comes in. Unmuted, by the way. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I love just, you're unmuted. Buzzsaw. <laughs> I don't even know where that's coming from. Okay. I thought I'd tell you in case you didn't know, because I know sometimes your pa sometimes people accidentally unmute themselves and then we have to hear weird conversations about cookies. Ugh. Don't ask. Anyway, continue. Well, I wanted to kind of touch on, if there were things that you liked, there are many ways to get involved within the 40k fandom. Uh, I kind of want to point out that, of course, it started off as a mini war game for the people who like to buy, assemble, paint, and then play with plastic figurines. Or, if you like to play with people from across the whole world, there is virtual tabletops. All hail so virtual good. tabletops. Uh, there are also several tabletop RPGs for exploring the various settings, and there's even a video game of one of those RPGs coming out in the next few months called Rogue Trader. Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored, just a big fan. Um, <laughs> listen, that's how most of this is going to go, is that it's like, hey, these are just avenues to explore. Uh, I am just a big nerd, big fan. Um, most of us have probably played some of these. 
Uh, there is a series of real-time strategy games. Uh, long, long story short, there's a lot of video games. If you want recommendations, hit me up. I have several. Ooh, um, uh, hold on a second. Uh, we have a uh, we have another. Uh, uh, Boohoo Kitty, thank you for becoming a foolish mortal. We will be getting your crypt ready soon. Get, uh, remember, you can have any pattern or color on your blanket, but it don't. You only have a choice between cotton and cotton. Thank you for following the chaos, and I hope you enjoy the ride. Heart. <laughs> Hurt. The one thing missing from 40k. The one thing um, missing is therapy. Now, Just for uh, me, there are no good societies in in Warhammer 40k. Just good people. Duh. Now uh, there <laughs> there are trading card games. They did try making their own and it, it failed. But there is also the Magic Gathering Commander decks that just came out earlier this month. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. Um. <laughs> And yeah, there there are several other ways. Fan art is a big thing. Uh, that will be my domain. Make, <laughs> people who make Warhammer 40k art are they they can make a decent amount of bucks so long as Games Workshop does not come down with the ban Warhammer. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, Survivor. Survivor poison flame. not sponsored. Hashtag don't sue us. GW. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. GW is very angry about people just talking. Yeah. About GW, which is really weird since it's just like free advertising. We don't understand. Yeah. It. It's like it, Rockstar it's... during the LP era as well as Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, bizarre. Anyway, and I guess proceed. The, the final plug, the final plug, is if you enjoy hearing about the lore, if you're curious about certain topics. Or if you want to see fun abridged series, there are so many good series out there. The one that I must recommend is If the Emperor Had a Text-Speech Device. Although it is on a uh, long-term hiatus due to uh, <coughs> copyright wars of Games Workshop. Those ones. Those uh, ones. <laughs> it, is, it is a very good series that is able to break down the lore into digestible bits. And it makes uh, parody versions of the characters that still represent their overall character while being silly and ridiculous. Again, basically explaining that the war between the Emperor and Chaos is just them constantly playing overly complicated games of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, wh what level are we talking here? Are we talking like XYZ bullshit? The Pendulum Summoning? The... Everything. The Emperor has all the broken cards. Ah! Every broken card. All three Egyptian gods. I'm pretty sure he has Exodia. He's got um, Blue Eyes White Dragon. He's got all the, uh, these things were banned. That is his deck. Um, oh, lots okay. of Pot of Greaves. Gotcha. <laughs> um, Zinch has a convol convoluted deck where it's just, uh, he only has two creatures, and those creatures help him find the other creatures, and it's just, uh, he basically plays, if, if anyone knows Magic Gathering lingo, he plays stacks. Mm. It's the turn that goes on for 40 years. Wait, what? Boohoo Kitty, what, what? It said you fall, but it's not. Uh, Boohoo Kitty, if you happen to be using um, Opera or a not Google Chrome or a Firefox, it might be doing some weird shit like that. I don't know. Twitch has been acting weird lately when it comes to the follower things. It could be a broken thing. I, I can't help. I'm so sorry. Yeah, there, it could be Twitch just being bitchy. Okay. Twitch do be like that sometimes. Twitch is Hashtag been weird. please don't kill us, Twitch. Please don't kill us. No, it has been weird. Like, I think maybe Google Chrome or something updated and maybe Twitch is getting cranky. I don't know. Twitch is weird. Anyway, focus. Um, that's basically <laughs> it. Um, if you... Like, if you just want to play a video game of Warhammer 40k, go on to Steam. There's a lot. I saw. There's a lot. There's a lot. Yes, hello. I will now be stealing, uh, I'll be stealing Zilla's thing now. Hi, welcome to Warhammer Wednesdays. I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, you can always join me for a stream. I've always, I do join on a lot. Well, join in, like, gaming on the stream. Oh, I yeah. mean, your sass is always appreciated as well. Oh, yes, my sass noise. And also my going, oh, he's hot. <laughs> Which is what's going to be said to every Space Marine you see. Not really! <laughs> stupid sexy scar brand is stupid sexy stupid scar, scar brand. brand. Okay. No, 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 no. If you go on to, uh, uh, I'm so not going to, you know, shout Zilla out or anything. What? No, no, no. Oh, how terrible. Oh, no, no. If you go on to Zilla, uh, oh, recently, terrible. his recent Warhammer Wednesday, he was showing me off all the different things in uh, Warhammer Hammer Fantasy, and 
Mm, was a sound that I made frequently. <laughs> anyway. Listen, the lizard men are hot. That's just how it goes. Yeah. We don't write the rules, we just obey them. Yes, yes, yes. Usually it's a different type of creature that's usually the hot one. This time, lizards. Lizard. <laughs> the Kai is wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, uh, I mean, I, I, I think I've retained some things. Or at least I understand some things better when you start Warham nerding and I'll be like, oh, wait, I understand this thing. I think I'm better. My brain hurts. It's honestly the best. Uh, all the information we spouted won't mean a thing until you see it in action, and that's the best way to go about it. <laughs> um, Hold on! Ark! An old friend of mine just popped in. What's this about you being taught 40k? You're three hours late, Ark! I have God, been... has it been three hours? Yes! yes. Yeah, did it feel longer? Because it felt longer in certain spots. Uh, yeah. It uh, took a while for those pry marks, man. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. Twitter just... <laughs> wait. Twitter just told you? I tweeted that out three hours ago. I... Ark, do you have that thing set to latest or home? Because if you have it set to latest, you would have gotten it earlier. Home, it's just garbage. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was the way you stayed at that core. That just killed me. <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah, uh, I have been basically been taught by my Warhammer friends, because I basically, uh, uh the 40 sub goal got hit, and I thought this would be funny. Regrets? Uh, not really. No regrets. I got to spend time with friends. I was about to say! <laughs> <laughs> I got to spend time with friends! And basically, my friends who were available could teach me Warhammer lore. There were more. One died. <laughs> The basics of 40 k is only a first fault! It's not wrong. Like, <laughs> legit, there's a video out there that has Warhammer 40k lore brought down to a minute. I've heard. You won't mention that. No, that would have been funny, though, if we just did that. It was just like, Cat, here's the Warhammer lore. It's the Emperor's fault. Done! <laughs> Alright, everyone, now back to Danganronpa. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. Ark, I wanted to invite you to that thing, but I think I wanted to invite you to be a part of this, but I didn't know if you would be available, etc., 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 etc. We aren't even going into the most well-known fan-made Space Marine chapter, the Angry Marine. Let's not go into the fan-made stuff. Let's stick to whatever is what is this called? Is this canon? Is this canon? Is this canon? Remember, everyone, the Warhammer canon is what you want it to be canon. Like, okay, that is actually a thing. With most of the Games mm -hmm. Workshop stuff, they encourage people to make their own sub-factions. Um, so if you want to make your own Space Marine chapter, that is what it's atten intended for. Make your own sub-faction. So, we, you define your own canon. Yes, uh, excuse me while I go make a chaos faction that's all based around me. No. <laughs> no one wants that. <laughs> listen, listen, I will gladly paint an entire army of chaos undivided, purple and black, and attach cat ears to all the demons. Please give me this quest. You have to include tails and hoodies. <laughs> okay, the hoodies might actually be harder than you think. <laughs> At that point, I'm going to need whole new models to 3D print. <laughs> okay, no hoodies. <laughs> like, where did this army of shadowy cat people come from? Oh, they must be that cat people race. No, that's not the cat people race. <laughs> Just me, sitting on top of my throne, being being carried in by men who do not look like Majima, Luxord, or any other place characters here on my I Can Explain list. <laughs> uh-huh. So, what I'm hearing is Slanesh faction. Yeah, I'm... No. I'm oh. <laughs> it's not that level of... <laughs> Not yet, not, <laughs> not yet. yet. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, no, I promise. There will be no Luxor running around in now, leather booty now, shorts. <laughs> now, yeah, now, <coughs> now, based on uh, on how chaos goes, if this starts getting closer to god areas, then we start running into issues, you know? Fear me. <laughs> no. But, Fear the cat. The cat yeah. is cat. <laughs> yeah, the cat is cat. But... I am not a god. What's a god? I'm a cat. Meow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you have not known fear, puny mortals uh, of the Imperium, until you have heard the uh, the cosmic meow. Meow. <laughs> uh, Ark Nightmare, let's put uh, it this way. Every time Horus Heresy was said, I took a sip of water I and I had to go to the bathroom after chest? a while. I promise to eat your enemies and make yeah, them Yeah, we went over more of the Horus Heresy than what I was expecting. Don't do that. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't turn it into an actual drink game. I turned it into a hydration game. What are you talking about? <laughs> I got thirsty. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, why is everyone... Plant, we've talked about this. No eating people unless I say so. Wait, do you even have an a mouth? Does my plant have a mouth? These are questions left unanswered. These are questions I will not answer. Action, everyone. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> I'm still on a Team Sisters of Battle, but a specific sub-branch of the Sisters of Battle. <laughs> Zilla knows which ones. <laughs> Only because of the dumb character idea I came up with. We shall make a new sub-faction of, of uh, Adeptus Sororitops, and it will be wonderful. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, there will be chainsaws. Uh, fun factoid: uh, Before we started this in this insanity, I was aware of the sisters of the sisters of battle, and I was aware of their sub faction, which was basically the sisters of battle who get kicked out, stripped of their armor, and they're basically told to run in, basically like what linen cloth and just giant fuck you chainsaws, and are thrown to the front line. Ba basically, yeah, yes. Okay, so found out about that. And dumb, stupid brain of mine went, you know what would be funny? If you made a sister of battle like that, but based around Juliet Starling from Lollipop Chainsaw. <laughs> with her boy, with her, her boyfriend's dis, dis disembodied head on her hip and everything. <laughs> uh, uh. I told this to Zilla, and Zilla's begging me to do it. <laughs> Please. Please play. At least in a TTRPG. Please. <laughs> Please, just play this character. <laughs> He even gave me ideas for Nick's head. I'm just saying. Robo <laughs> skull on the side. It's not a skull. It's a what is it? You you explained it once. It's a robo. Servo skull. Yeah, robo skull. I, servo. Servo skull. Sorry. I love you, honey. Love you too, dear. <laughs> just think like, stupid. But apparently Warhammer's a lot darker and deep, deeper, deeper, darker. Serious. I tried to warn you. I tried to warn you. You, you were like, oh, it can't be that dark. It's, I, it will get dark. And it, it's like, yeah, but it'll, it'll be fine. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're yeah. walking into the. You're walking into it. I'm, I'm gonna trust that you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. No. Um. I was gonna say. Uh. For those who also want a fun fact, I made as a joke idea for a D and D thing, which I call the Frank Miller verse. If you ever are aware of the comic writings of Frank Miller, Captain Edgelord himself, starter of the Grim Dark, if you will. Oh God, his shit. Um, <laughs> I had a dumb idea. I, uh, Dapper, you were there when I mentioned it, right? Yeah, we created it together. Yes, we created it together, which was called the Frank Miller verse. And um, yeah, the Frank Miller verse is starting to look like a happy unicorn fun place. <laughs> To be fair, the Frank Millerverse was literally a parody on the concept of Grimdark. This is just proper Grimdark. Yeah. That yeah. that's like like we legitimately made that as a parody of how dark can we go while trying to still make this funny. Yeah, yeah it's like by, by like how overtly dark it is. Like one and, of the yeah. Uh, like yeah, and uh, just just to, just to point out, the Imperium Man is supposed to be a like. It, it's supposed to be uh, what, what? It's supposed to be funny. Yeah, it's supposed, like, it's supposed, to... supposed to be darkly humorous. Oh, so it's like... kind of like the Brotherhood of Steel, how it's just basically making fun of the patriotism. Exactly. Yeah. It... Like, I reckon uh... if I'm wrong, wasn't it initially created as a uh, as a, uh, a funny jab at the Thatcher administration? Mm, yes. It was originally made as a joke of the '90s super steroid filled macho hero comics so like yeah. if you look at the young bloods by image that is what they were making fun of and uh, i was gonna say they were so, also like making fun of like uh if you've ever watched duke nukem and everything that duke nukem parodies that yes yes that 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 embodies what the goal was for warhammer 40k to be a parody of these overly edgy overly steroid filled things from the 90s but then, at some point between the late 90s and early 2000s, they drank their own Kool-Aid. Real hard. Yep. And they decided, what if we made it extra edge, embraced it, doubled down, and made it our, our designated theme? And then they haven't gone back. Wish they did. Yeah, the only times you will hear anything bad about the Empire is if it's like in a book. Or done by like, anyone else who's playing the game and just was like, we fucking hate the Empire. <laughs> right, like, uh, the character I mentioned earlier, Caiaphas Kane, 
who is just the best man to fail upwards, <laughs> has mis has said like multiple times, yes, he believes in the god emperor of mankind. Yes, he does, you know, worship him. But really only because there's a gun to his head. Mm. That that there are multiple multiple things wrong with the empire and he will constantly shit on them sadly there are a few who actually think the imperium of man is a good thing and those people we avoid like a tw avoid like the fucking plague oh yeah. ex exponentially yes you can tell when someone has actually read and understood the lore if you ask them what they think of the empire Fuck now them. i've met people who love the empire as like a fictional faction or like i really like their aesthetic <clears throat> go krieg then there are other people who are like, no, I want the Empire of Man for real. We avoid them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's like the people who really like the Stormcloaks in Skyrim, and it's like, please tell me you've played the other way too. No, only Stormcloaks. And red flag, excuse me, I'm going to just stuff oh, my purse full of breadsticks. Yeah. Excuse me as I stuff my purse full of breadsticks. Like, We're on an like, Olive Garden in the scenario, apparently. <laughs> It is a funny situation whenever, as a fan, you run into another person from the fandom, quote-unquote, who uh, cannot look at the concept of, like, a uh, like a critical essence of a faction, in a sense of, like, there can sometimes be no good option, you know? Like, uh, uh, but it's like, no, no, the, these are the protagonists, therefore they're the good guys, you know? It's like, no, no, you know? <laughs> no. It's the just of how this goes. Yeah, it's like all people who think the Brotherhood of Steel is the best option. I'm like, it's not. They have the coolest power armor. I'll yeah. give them that. They got really good power armor, but I think them hoarding technology basically to not let any other people. I, like, I get the idea. We are hoarding yeah. technology so we don't have to use them again. So we don't use them against each other. I'm cool with that. <laughs> but what about technology that like, would help us with, like, let's say, mm, I don't know, farming? Yeah. Yeah, no, and it's like they. They have cool armor, they have a cool aesthetic, a cool, uh, even cool lore. Their lore and the structure of how the Brotherhood exists is really cool. Are they objectively good? No, no, God, no. Nowhere near close. <laughs> but the closest, I think, the Fallout got was, followers of the, was Followers of the Apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. So and... that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Sorry, we were veered off. Back to 40k. Anyway. <laughs> but it was just like. Well, that was. I think that concludes our lore dump. There are the, uh, the leagues of Votan, but they're like very new, and none of us have read up on them. And the space dwarves, which, as we joked of off off screen, off stream, cat, you play freaking Deep Rock Galactic. There you go. <laughs> yeah, like that's probably the best way to explain them. They go into like space hulks, which are just these abandoned spaceships out and out that have been dumped from the warp. They go in there, they have power armor, they try to make money off their hull, and they fight Tyranids, because they have a really big stick up their ass about Tyranids eating their entire homeworld. I mean, I'd, be yeah. a, I'd have a small stick up my butt, too, of a bunch of freaking xenomorph plant people thingy mabobbers. I don't know what they are anymore. I think my brain's turning into mush. So, it's carbon-based teeth that arc, just have an attitude. Um, Ark, here is the thing. I don't think we'll be able to teach Cat Warhammer 40k proper, but I have a proposition. I'm listening, and I have the funny feeling it says you have to play Juliet. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I have an alternative rule set, which only works if you never want to go to tournaments, which I assume you do not. Do I look like a tournament player? No, I do not want to go to tournaments. Mm -hmm. It is made by a person who, not sponsored, hashtag, please sponsor me, senpai. Um, <laughs> please sponsor me, senpai? Um, they are one of the biggest people for making Warhammer 40k proxy 3D prints. Mm -hmm. um, it's called One Page Rules. Legit, to play this game, technically you need two pages. One page is for the rules on how to play, and one page for the rules of your faction. That is it. All they ask, you try this one. Okay, I'll try it on your channel. <laughs> yes, we shall coordinate, figure out a day. I'll figure out how to play it. I might hit some people up to help us out. Yeah, because this is going to be like, and you get to deal with uh, what uh, Dapper over here deals with every Thursday when I forget my own freaking rules as playing as a rogue and going, uh, what do I do the thing? How do I do the thing again? 
One day, one what? day you will memorize what Uncanny Dodge is. <laughs> <laughs> it's Uncanny Dodge and Evasion, I keep mixing them up! I, my favorite so far has been Evasive Dodge. That That is my, my favorite so far. <laughs> the joke is, when I finally understand the difference between Cunning... <laughs> those. I, it's the day we fight the BB Big Bad Evil Guy, and the Big Bad Evil Guy will die of psychic damage because I remembered. <laughs> it, it just... Hey, no, no, like, I'm pretty sure the best way it got summed up what, uh, was uh, uh, just the the lot of you talking about, like, oh, you have all of your stuff on point, and it's like, <laughs> oh, I I just gotta go in the other room. And it's like, wait, wait, no, you need to run the big bat. No, no you you memorized shit. You, you're working together as a team. You've done it. <laughs> I, I Can't remember what evasion was! <laughs> Yeah, you know what evasion is, you win. Can't... <laughs> no, no, my other personal favorite. Can't remember the name of the bad guy and didn't just do some weird flub up, aka all of the Jade Emperor. <laughs> Jade yeah, Marshall. That's a... Yeah, that's great. <laughs> NPC, Jade Marshall. From the immediate onset, Cat referred to him as the Jade Emperor, uh, to the point where I started calling him the Jade Emperor on accident. <laughs> I like but Journey to the West. In and out of session. I legitimately, in a talk with someone, one of the other players, called him the Jade Emperor <laughs> three times in a call on accident. <laughs> <laughs> I have that much influence. Anyway, um, I'm going to just find us someone so you can raid. You guys want to raid someone? Yes, um, let's raid Shadow Legends. We're not raid Shadow Legends. Refusal to get sponsored. Anyway, hashtag never sponsor me. Uh, let me see who's... I, uh, I have a my end, unless you have someone. Well, I know Tots Gerblin is currently doing a uh, birthday stream. Still going. She's been taking, uh, they've been taking naps periodically during the stream. They're doing a birthday stream, and I thought I could bug them for their birthday. You can always attack Num Skull. There's always Num, but I, I attacked Num yesterday. I'm trying oh, hey, to he's, yeah. he's going to be in my game in a couple hours. And that's the other reason why I'm not raiding, because I know in a couple hours those two are going to be doing some shenanigans involving soup dwarves. Oh, wait, no. Not... No, no, not soup dwarves. Just oh. kidnapping. Oh, normal just... kidnapping. Oh, uh, normal kidnapping. My soup dwarves... Thank God, are... it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, as normal as congratulations, you've walked into the fight arena. Here's the knockout gas. Uh, 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 fight the dwarves. Get out of the room before you get knockout gassed. Uh, yeah, uh, context. Uh, soup dwarves is actually a thing that I'm letting uh, Dapper borrow. Because I have concepts, according to Dapper, that are the greatest things ever, and I really should use them, and god dang it, Cat, please DM again. Yes! <laughs> we could do uh, Nero Napier. Yeah. They're uh, playing Potionomics, and Mizuki, his wife, is usually in chat or in uh, yeah. in Discord, so uh, that, that'd be no, nice, right? Yeah, uh, no, I was going to rate Tots, it's a birthday stream. Ah, uh, fair. Birthday streams okay. get priority! Uh, Anyway, uh, hitting the start raid. Everyone, get ready for a lovely raid. It's time for a raid roundup. I don't know what I'm doing here. Why do I sound like I'm trying to sound like Johnny Jelly Jaw? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Anyway, uh, everybody, I want you all to be good people. Don't do anything, you know, bad. Be the positive thing in the universe. I don't have a send out. I need to work on that, okay? It's a don't praise the crime. Imperium. It's awful. <laughs> don't praise yeah. the Imperium. Anyway, have a good, have day, good day, everyone. Everybody. Have a good day, everyone. Be good people. And raid. And now we wait. 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 Da, 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 da. And we have successfully attacked.